Colorado, it was a season to trample the skeptics. The defending national champions unveiled a pack of talented underclassmen, and everyone, even Coach Bill McCartney, forgot it was a rebuilding year. Actually, Colorado needed few repairs because the chief architect, Darian Do-It-All Hagen, was bidding a sweet farewell to his extraordinary college career. Alabama knows bowls, but who knew Coach Gene Stallings would be savoring a 10-victory season? In Tuscaloosa, history repeats itself. You win with the likes of Saran Stacy, and to that kind of style, you add substance, the suffocating defense of Robert Stewart. Tonight, a meeting of past, present, and future powers, Colorado and Alabama. It's a humid but colorful night in Miami for the Bowl by the Beach, the second annual Blockbuster Bowl. We are at the ultra-modern Joe Robbie Stadium for what promises to be one of the most competitive bowls of the season. Now the ground here is wet from some scattered showers, but the skies have cleared somewhat. It's number 15 Colorado against number 8 Alabama. Hi everyone, I'm Andrea Joyce, and tonight, a game of the old and the new. Colorado, whose program really came of age in the 80s, and Alabama, one of the most successful programs in the history of college football. And tonight, the Crimson Tide is making its 44th bowl appearance. That's 10 more than any other school. This also marks the beginning of the CBS College Bowl season. And for the call on this first one, let's send you upstairs to Jim Nance and Dan Fouts. Andrea, thank you. It's great to be back on college football and a pleasure, Dan, to sit alongside with you tonight. And we're going to see the closeout of a career that's really one of the great option careers in the history of college football. I'm talking about the option operator for the Buffaloes, Darian Hagan, who led him to a national championship a year ago. And he's had such a wonderful career. I talked to Coach Bill McCartney just moments ago, and he says tonight's going to be the payback night for Darian Hagan's career. He's going to open up the offense. Come completely out of character and junk the eye bone. So we're going to see Darian Hagan at his very best tonight. Wow, it's going to be something to watch. Darian coming back from a knee injury from last year's Orange Bowl. Also bouncing back from a knee injury in 1990, Saran Stacy for Alabama. He had a big season for the Crimson Tide, Dan. Well, this is a young Crimson Tide football team, especially on that offensive line. And what Saran Stacy has provided for this football team is leadership and that leadership has taken the form of great performance. You know, I think if there was ever one college football matchup destined for a close finish, it would be Colorado and Alabama. Just look what happened this season, Dan. Well, it's because of defense, Jim. Both teams have outstanding defenses and coaches that are not afraid to take chances on offense. We should see a wide-open offensive game as well. All right, well, we'll look forward to that. And right now, down on the field, one of the great scenes in college football, one of the grand entrances. Here comes the mascot from Colorado, Ralphie Three, leading on the Buffaloes. McCartney, his team 8-2-1 on the season, ranked number 15 in America, and a share of the Big 8 title, three straight years, Big 8 champions, the Colorado Buffaloes. Working with us on the sidelines, we're pleased to have with us Jim Gray, and let's join him right now backstage. All right, Jim, as Alabama gets ready for its 44th bowl appearance, you can't help but think back to the man who led them to so many of those bowls, the legendary Paul Bear Bryant. Now, I had the opportunity to speak with current coach Gene Stallings, and he told me that he knows he's always going to play second fiddle to the Bear, but he does not view that legend as a burden. In fact, just prior to his team leaving Tuscaloosa, he took the entire squad to the Paul Bear Bryant Museum on the campus, and that proved to be a very motivational visit. It kind of gets you pumped up and adrenaline rushing, and and you want to you want to just kind of live up to the level and expectation everybody has for you because you played Alabama, and it's really really a great I think a motivational too. Uh, he 
taking us there and, and seeing um, what we're supposed to live up to and how good we're supposed to be. So as this team gets ready to take the field, Jim Nance, more so than any other Alabama team in recent history, this one definitely carries the tradition of the Bear. Jim? And here they come, number eight in the country with a 10-1 and one record, the Crimson Tide. Gene Stallings with a superb effort in his second season in Alabama. The only loss was to number three, Florida. It's Alabama and Colorado. College football is back on CBS. CBS Sports coverage of the Blockbuster Bowl is sponsored by Blockbuster Video. More movies than anyone in the world. Alamo Rent-A-Car. Ford and your Ford dealer. Aflac, insuring over 35 million people worldwide. And by Raycom, proud to be creators of the Blockbuster Bowl. Well, 73 and humid with a 1 in 5 chance of a passing shower. Well, we showed you the entrance of Ralphie, and uh, let's take another look now with our Buffalo cam. And Dan Fouts, tell me, did the knee ever touch? Was he down? Well, instant replay is looking at it right now. Yes, definitely. Both the uh, right knee there and the right cheek of Ralphie hit the turf there. Uh, all I can hope for, Jim, is that that's not an omen for the Buffalo football team tonight, or the Buffalo. <laughs> <laughs> well, Colorado won the toss and elected to defer until the second half, so Alabama will receive. The defending national champions, Colorado. And Mitch Berger will handle the kickoff chores. And here's a dangerous man to watch throughout the contest. We're talking about David Palmer. They call him Deuce. He's a freshman, a true freshman from Birmingham, Alabama. He's run three punts back this year for touchdowns. And he's been 1,000 yards in all-purpose yardage for the Tide. And as just a freshman, that is remarkable. What a career he's going to have at Alabama. You see him everywhere on the field as a receiver. Some at quarterback. And trying to keep it away from him, they go instead to Derek Lassick. Out across the 20. And a nice run to the 30-yard line. Lassick is a backup tailback. We'll see action tonight behind Saran Stacy, but Jay Barker pulls the trigger at quarterback. A freshman making his fourth start. In the backfield, two seniors, the only two seniors on offense, Turner and Stacy, the receivers, Kevin Lee and Prince Wembley. Tied in at Steve Buskey. Here's a look now at Jay Barker. Firing to Stacy on the sideline route at about the 34-yard line. Very young offensive line for the tie, Dan. Toby Shields is the center. The center of attraction, he'll be going up against Joel Steed. That'll be a matchup we'll be watching. But uh, the big thing, Jim, though, is this youth on this offensive line. John Stevenson, just a true freshman there. He's uh, look, looked upon as being a leader for the future. Averages out as a sophomore offensive line. A freshman, a junior, and three sophs. Second down at six for Alabama on the pitch. Here's Saran Stacy. Shakes off the tackle of Marcellus Elder, and Greg Thomas forced him out of bounds. At about the 37, Joel Steed. First team, All-America, Walter Camp. Leonard Renfro and Marcellus Elder on the line. Greg Beekert is the top tackler for the Buffaloes. And the outside backers, Ron Wolford, along with Chad Brown. Good secondary, headed by Figures and Bradford on the corners, and Hamilton and Thomas at the safeties. Third down and three for the Crimson Tide. Three receivers in the game. Shuffle pass. Stacy will have the first down. He breaks into the open at midfield. And caught in the secondary by Dion Figures.
32 yards. Saran Stacy on the shuffle pass. Just a perfect call for the Tide. As perfect execution as Wilson comes along on the trap block and then into the secondary. Dion Figures makes a touchdown saving tackle right there as he lays out. But a big third down conversion for the Tide and they're in business. David Palmer is in the game, lined up to the right, now coming in motion. First and 10 from the 30. Here's this dangerous freshman touching it for the first time. And he gets about five. Eric Hamilton. Strong safety on the hit. Gene Stallings told us that in order to beat the Colorado defense, uh, players such as Palmer and Stacy are going to have to come up big and make some big plays. And he's not going to be afraid to use Palmer all over the field, as you mentioned, Jim. Uh, we saw him there on the reverse, and we'll also see him play a little bit of quarterback this evening. He ran a touchdown in from 10 yards out, lined up as a quarterback against Auburn. Second down and five to the short side with Stacy, and about two yards for Saran. He's been busy this week trying to pick up a passport, Dan. He's headed to the Japan Bowl, as several other players are, including his backfield mate, Kevin Turner. Yesterday at 6.30 in the morning, he was in Miami trying to get his passport all straightened away for that all-star game in Japan. And he had to go back to uh, have his picture retained. He could have used this picture right here. That's a good one <laughs> there. Good one. But going to the Japan Bowl, that's a nice capper to a wonderful career. And one of the coaches will be Bill McCartney. Third down and two out of the eye Stacy on the pitch look out they've got him for a loss Chad Brown forced the play and Leonard Renfro was in on that action a loss of five and in talking to Stacy yesterday about his uh, favorite play he says it's the toss to either the right side or the left side already this evening we've seen the Tide run that three times well the Buffaloes they know it's coming as well that time they did a super job and dropped him for a big loss Matt Wethington will attempt the field goal of 46 yards. His career long is 42. Alabama's had trouble in this area this year. Field goal attempt on the opening drive. Wethington. Not enough. Touchback. Alabama comes up empty on the opening drive. Colorado will have the football for the first time. And the line of scrimmage is the 28. Let me correct that. They bring it out to the line of scrimmage after Alabama missed the field goal attempt. Hagan throwing right away. Trying to swing it over to James Hill. Starting fullback. And there he is, Darian Hagan quarterback who has presided over the finest three-year stretch in Colorado football history. Three Big Eight titles for Darian Hagan and a national championship. Never lost a Big Eight game as a starter. What about Lamont Warren at uh, tailback? Well, all he did this year was set a freshman record for CU with uh, 833 yards. Broke the freshman running record that had been held by O.C. Oliver. On second and ten, he'll fumble, and Hagan was right there to pick it up. And Hagen was there because he was carrying out his fake on the triple option there. Gave the ball to the up back and continued down the line of scrimmage. We'll see the fumble here, but watch Hagen. The ball comes right to him, heads up. A lot of players would just stop after he gives the ball to the running back. But uh, Hagen, the senior that he is, heady ball player, was in the right place at the right time. John Copeland helped strip it from Hill. Third down and eight. A lot of shifting now for the Buffaloes with the slot formation to the left. Flag on the field, jump pass by Hagen, and George Teague almost intercepted for Alabama. Sean Brown was in the area. Check the marker. Camarado will get another crack at it. It'll be third and three after the five-yard step off. And let's check in now with the Buffalo's offensive front. It starts strong at center with Jay Lewenberg, an All-America, consensus All-America this year. But newcomers on the rest of the line, including freshman Clint Moore, sophomore Roger Ivey, Anderson and Hansen are the tackles. Jim Hansen, all he is is a 3.7 GPA in 
Aerospace Engineering. How about that? Now, that's a real genius. I'm telling you, he's hoping to be a Rhodes Scholar one day. He's number one right now in the Colorado School of Engineering, number 77. Jim Hansen, the right tackle. Third down and three for the Buffs. Another flag, and they sack Hagan. Antonio London King blitzing in on the quarterback. That turf wedged in the face guard. Yeah, he got a little turf, but uh, he might also have been offsides. We've seen Colorado do a lot of shifting out of the uh, normal formations, but this one's going to go against the Buffaloes. The biggest problem that McCartney said as far as changing his offense is can he still protect the quarterback? Obviously, they can't protect him this time as Antonio London comes in and picks up his fifth sack of the year. Well, it was a motion penalty, Dan, against Colorado. The penalty refused, so give the sack to London and bring on the punt team. And there he is, David Palmer, freshman with three punt returns for touchdowns, had a fourth one called back this year. And McCartney told us last night that he will punt to him. He's very proud of his punt coverage team and very confident if he gets a punt that stays up there for four and a half seconds. Mitch Berger is the Colorado punter, averaging 41 yards a punt. He was blocked once this year. This one a liner to Palmer at the 34. Kind of punt that normally he would relish to run back. And he is swung down by Greg Thomas after a seven-yard run back, a 38-yard punt. So each team has had it once. We're scoreless. Opening quarter, blockbuster bowl number two. Bowl games always bring out the alumni. Here's one, Keith McCants, used to play at Alabama, left as an All-American in 1989, now with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Keith, I want to ask you, there are all these reports about Bill Parcells coming to the Bucs as their head coach. Would you be in favor of that? Would you like to have him? Well, um, it was a business decision made by the front office, and I'm... I'm going, I'm going whatever they want to do. You know, it'll be great to have him, but who knows what he's going to do. Okay, you're out here for Alabama tonight. Let me ask you about our game tomorrow. You played against the Bears. You've seen the Cowboys all week. How do you feel about tomorrow's game? Well, you have to look at the Bears. They are old line. They've been together a long time. They're very experienced. They know how to work together. But Dallas, they're they are newborn. They're a newborn team, and they're hungry. All right, Keith, best of luck to you. Let's go back upstairs to Jim Nance. Boy, wasn't he some rushing linebacker at Alabama. Keith McCants, he left after his junior year. We just saw a near interception by Dion Figures on a pass intended for Steve Buskey. So the Tide now facing second and ten. The ball was almost deflected over to his partner there, the, the deep safety, but uh, trying to hit the tight end down the middle didn't work. Lassick is in the game getting the pitch and a good run for Derek Lassick with a lead block from his fullback Martin Houston and Matt Hammond at left tackle. We're seeing now Stallings go to his second backfield of Martin Houston and Derek Lassick. Lassick gives the Tide a, a little different type of runner than Saran Stacy. What you see with Lassick is a guy that changes direction very quickly, very enthusiastic young man, really enjoys playing. Junior from Haverstraw, New York, averaging over five yards a carry. Third down and four after a six-yard gainer by Lassick coming out in, in motion now. Here come the buffs. Barker gets it away. And a first down catch by Curtis Brown in Colorado Territory at the 45. Wonderful play by Barker as he avoided the rush. Bought himself a little bit of time. Watch the blitz come right up the middle here. There's Beaker at 19. And he gets out to the outside away from Johnson. There's his wide receiver open in the middle. But the reason that Barker is playing right now instead of Danny Woodson, Gene Stallings told us, well, it's just common sense. The man has performed the last three weeks. All victories, all on the road. Danny Woodson. Backs him up tonight. He had started at quarterback the first eight games. Stacy fumbles the pitch but falls on it. Smothers it near midfield. Chad Brown uh, was there for good measure. A loss of six. What happened on this one, Dan? Well, it appeared he was looking upfield. This, again, is a toss play. Uh, Stacy's favorite play. And before he can get his mitts on that one, it went right through the bread basket. But who can blame him? Staring him right in the eye was Chad Brown. 
He's got some interesting plans for after this bowl game, huh, Jim? We got a nice little trip planned to Central America, Costa Rica, for a snaking expedition. We'll have to talk about that a little more. I know you'd like to have joined them. Second and 16, and whistle it dead. Delay a game. Dead ball, delay of game on the offense. Still second down. Second and 21 now for Alabama. And Alabama showing some of their inexperience. Their youthful team with a freshman quarterback. Uh, that's a, uh, a mistake that has cost Alabama. In fact, Gene Stallings addressed it after the Florida loss. And what they do is very uh, unusual to have the wide receivers come into the huddle. They call the play. Then Parker gives the snap count to uh, avoid those type of situations. But that time, they were still a little bit too long. You've never heard of anything like that before, have you? No, I haven't. Uh, and we talked to Gene about it. Second and 21 pass in the area of Martin Houston. And Gene told us the reason he has the wide receivers go into the huddle and tell the team the play instead of the quarterback is to save a little bit of time so that when he gets to the line of scrimmage, the quarterback can use that extra time to read the defense and make the proper audibles if necessary. Now, this was uh, an innovation that uh, Gene had when he was a tight end player for Raymond Berry Sr. at Paris High School in Paris, Texas. Gene Stallings called all the plays from his tight end position. That's some story. Third down and 21, Houston the single back. And he'll swing it over to Houston. Just getting into Colorado territory, but a punting situation. Greg Beaker on the tackle. Two possessions for Alabama, two times into the Colorado into the field without points. Eight minutes to go in the scoreless first quarter. Tank Williamson on the punt for Bama. And Darian Hagan fielding the punt and not getting enough room to execute the catch. And it's going to be a flag against Andre Royal of Alabama. You call it exactly right, Jim. He was within uh, uh, an eyelash of Hagan when Hagan caught the ball. And the referee says uh, you've got to give that man a little bit more room to make that grab. Pass interference. call this punt receiving interference. Yeah, pass interference. Fans didn't quite understand that one. I think he's going to try again. Five yard penalty, first down. Okay, there we go, to clarify. And they explain it to Gene Stallings. He liked the hit. We'll come back with the Buffs' second possession. Well, Colorado Buffalo fans not only have an affinity for Darian Hagan, so do his teammates. He's a good barometer on how this team has gone the last three years. Uh, sophomore, he finished fifth in the Heisman. Uh, we go 11 and 0, play for our first national championship. We call him Mr. Magic, and he carries a magical attitude with him that you know, no matter what the odds are, that we can get it done. You know, even when Hagen was out was was out of the game when he was hurt several times this year, that attitude that he brought has carried over to the whole team. So even when somebody else was in there, we knew that we could get the job done. The words of teammates Jay Lewenberg and Chad Brown as Hagen throws incomplete on first down. And that's what his teammates say about him. The, the opponents say that he forces us to cover the entire width and depth of the field. The width with the option, the depth with the passing ability. Here's their eye bone formation. Second down and 10. And the give to Lamont Warren. His first carry. No gain. John Copeland corralled him. One of the great matchups tonight, Danny, is Jay Lewenberg at center for the Buffs against Robert Stewart, the nose man, number 34. Well, here it is right here. Watch Lewenberg come off this block here on Stewart and push him out of the way. But Stewart, with the quickness, runs himself out of the play, but Lewenberg with the good agility to stay with him and push him by. And flags everywhere before the snap. One from Colorado up here to move first. They got Craig Anderson, the left tackle. Ball, false start on the offense. Well, 
both offenses are having trouble and you can understand why Colorado might have a few problems with their new offensive sets they're using they are having trouble protecting Hagen and Hagen has been off the mark so far this evening 0 for 2 and he's been sacked one time he faces third and 14 and they shift everyone out of the backfield with three receivers in and a man on a wing and here comes another heavy rush coming up from the safety spot Stacy Harrison labels himself as Dirty Harry and I think he just made his day Jim <laughs> getting that sack. Again Colorado having all types of trouble protecting the quarterback. From the left side of the screen you see number one sneak up here and there's just nobody in the backfield to protect the quarterback and he's got no shot at all as Copeland comes from the right side as well. Mitch Berger to punt from the end zone to David Palmer. This one, a good punt out to the 50. A little high step move by Palmer to free himself. Look out. He may take it. He's got to beat the punter. He gets the block ahead. Return for a touchdown. He's done it. David Palmer. And it really was that little high step move there that froze the coverage team of the Buffaloes. And then when he got inside the 20, he had six red shirts to take him on in. <laughs> that poor punter never had a shot, did he? Oh. Good blocking out ahead. Will Brown took out two Buffaloes. Extra point is added. Big five. Weathington, 7 0 Alabama, and take us through it, Dan. Well, it's the uh, confidence in his own ability that allows him to make this move here. Saw the little hole between Lewenberg there. Now he gets his convoy to the outside. Count the number of red shirts that lead him on into the end zone against the punter. And Antonio Langham finishes off the punter, takes him out. 52 yards, and you just knew it was a matter of time before Palmer made a play. This is his eighth touchdown of the year. As you said, Jim, his fourth as a punt returner. Remember, he had one punt return for a touchdown that was called back. And Bill McCartney was kind of prophetic yesterday when he said that this man, Palmer, is more electrifying than Rocket Ismail. And he had to face the Rocket the last two years in the Orange Bowl. David Palmer. Touchdown returns this year of 56 yards against Vanderbilt, 69 against Tulane, 90-yard run back against LSU, and he opens the scoring tonight in the Blockbuster Bowl with a 52-yard run back. Hey, at 5'9", 165 pounds, they call him the pocket rocket. <laughs> well, we talked about what it would take to win this ball game, and we talked about special teams, big plays on special teams. Well, we tipped off a little bit because of Dave Palmer's uh, success this year doing just that. Steve Cole to kick for Alabama. 6-11 remaining in the first. 7-0 tied. Chris Hudson and Charles Johnson standing on the goal line for Colorado. Short kick. We'll get back to one of the deep returners. Is Johnson on the run back and out to the 32 or five Alabama players take him out Joe Robbie Stadium the second blockbuster bowl number eight Alabama and number 15 Colorado our overhead shots tonight from the Goodyear Glint Spirit of Akron courtesy of Goodyear Tires. Tonight's pilot is Captain Dick Hesch from Sunrise, Florida. Heavy to the right. 
with the Buffaloes on first down, and they send Warren out of the backfield. There's another blitz. They had to get it away quickly, and they overthrow Michael Westbrook. Trying to set up a screen pass that time, and it was like a jailbreak. They got to slow him down a little bit longer than that. Remember, been like Hagen is only about 5'10". Been about three jailbreaks already, Dan. We have 127 members of the Crimson Tide dressed out this evening. There they all are. <laughs> And you memorized every single name and number. Well, uh, I, I got to about the 119th, and I, I gave it up because they're starting duplicating numbers on Who is number 111? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Okay, second down and 10. A lot of jumping around. They're going to get Colorado for a false start here. ball, false start on the offense, still second down. Let's check in with Jim Gray, Jim. All right, Jim, Bill McCartney told us yesterday that everybody in Colorado criticized him for kicking to dangerous punt return men. Well, he told us that over the past 10 years, his career in Colorado, that only four guys have taken punts back all the way. Three of them are names you're going to recognize. The Rocket, Barry Sanders, now Palmer. He also said that over the past eight years, they are plus two on the net uh, return. So they're doing pretty well. Let's go back upstairs. Hagen's pass is batted and falls incomplete. Yes, that punt return by the Rocket was the controversial one for McCartney, but fortunately for Colorado, it was called back because of a clipping penalty in the game's final minute. Hagen now 0 for 4 passing. He's been sacked twice. Well, we'll see who knocked that one down. Right in here, Watch as he gets his hands up. It's number 94, John Copeland. He bats this ball a long way, too. Here's Lamont Warren running it back to the original line of scrimmage. George Teague on the tackle, and the Buffs have to punt again. Now, this is a calculated uh, risk by McCartney going to this new offense, uh, but he's only had 10 days to practice it, five days in pads, five days without pads. He knew there were some kinks he had to iron out. But right now, his biggest problem is just protecting Darian Hagan. 0 for 4 start for Hagan. And his other problem is number 2, David Palmer, who awaits another return opportunity. He's going to let this one go. Very favorable bounce for the Buffs. Bama will start inside of its 20. So one touchdown, a run back on a punt by David Palmer, and the tide's ahead. Well, these two teams have had such similar seasons, close games, uh, low pro productivity offensively, and young teams, especially on the line. Look at the returning players on the line, offensive lines. Lewenberg for Colorado, Hammond for Bama, but the rest were all new starters. And in talking to Lewenberg, he says he felt like an assistant coach at times this year because the guys around him were asking him, hey, what do I do? Who do I block on this play? And uh, with Hammond, he's just a sophomore, so it's not as if yeah. he's been around a long time either. Fort Payne at Hammond. This team breaks huddle and comes to the line at the 17. No tight end. Three receivers set. Curtis Brown, the extra receiver. Running play for Turner. Good run by Kevin Turner. Senior fullback who averages about six yards a pop, Dan. That's pretty impressive for your fullback. And he picks up about six on this play, Jim, so he's right on his average. Actually got all the way up to nine yards. But it's an inside run, a tough run by Turner. But that's his bread and butter. Uh, patterns his game after a couple of great fullbacks in the NFL, Tom Rathman and Brad Muster. We saw David Palmer come into the game and relay the play. And here on the toss, Saran Stacy with a first down carry out to the 33. Turner and Stacy work so well in the backfield. The uh, fake by Palmer really takes the uh, attention of the buff defense. But watch 
the block here as Turner comes down and opens up the hole and the uh, Tide picks up the first down. Beautiful block on the linebacker right there. First down Alabama. Inside they go with Turner. And he manages two. Ted Johnson, a freshman. Vista, California on the hit. Turner was telling us uh, yesterday that he's having a lot of fun opening his mail these days when he goes to the mailbox. He, he sees all these letterheads from the NFL teams. He's one of the guys that expects to be drafted in the NFL because he has decent speed, but he is also an excellent receiver out of the backfield. His 40th start at Alabama tonight. In second and eight, Stacy only for about a yard. Chad Brown sought him out. Well, this is like uh, the way it is as you're down in the pits here, Jim. Not a lot of room there as Brown and Johnson go airborne there to bring down Saran Stacy. Short gain. Third down and seven. Palmer lined up to the right side. Comes Colorado and Greg Thomas as Barker almost lost the football, but he's ruled down at the 20. Greg Thomas and Eric Hamilton, a safety blitz and a loss of 17. Oftentimes in a ball game, Jim, you'll see one team do what the other team's doing when the other team's having success. We've seen Alabama come with the safety blitz and sack the quarterback. Well, it's Colorado's time now as they bring both safeties. Eric Hamilton, number six, was in the backfield as well. Colorado has a returner who could break one. Darian Hagan. How often have you seen your quarterback running back punts? And how often do you look forward to uh, punt returns as much as we are this <laughs> evening? Really? Did you run back punts very often for the chair? Oh, look at this, a block. A block and the Buffs are set at the three-yard line. Ron Wolford came in to knock it down. Special teams, another big play. This time it's for Colorado. As Wolford gets in there and gets his first block of the year. This is six blocks now. Watch Wolford get in here and just smother this ball. Lucky for Alabama, it didn't go in the end zone. But there's just nobody there for number 56. Six times this year now the Buffaloes have blocked a kick. That was just a missed assignment. Wolford was never touched. And Williamson never had a chance. So Colorado, first and goal from the three. They've got Scott Phillips in the backfield, along with Lamont Warren and Michael Westbrook. And Hagan calls timeout. Had to call timeout. The 25-second clock had almost expired. I was about to ask you, did you ever run back a punt at any level of, of football? No, and I never blocked one either. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Mama. Well, let's talk about bowls coming up on CBS Tuesday. UCLA against Illinois, led by Jason Verdusco. The Illini and the Bruins, Illinois. Lou Tepper will make his debut as the Illini coach. And on January 1, Terry Bradshaw will join me for Florida State at Texas A&M. Florida State, 10-2 on the year, led by Casey Weldon against the underrated Texas A&M Aggies. That'll be a great one. We're seeing two young teams here tonight, Jim, but that uh, Aggie team is a young team as well. Back to Texas A&M, when you take into account the entire top 25, they have the most underclassmen, so I'm speaking of freshmen and sophomores, the starters by far. They have 13 under or freshmen and sophomores as starters. Colorado is second with nine. Now, here we go. First and goal. Inside they go with Phillips. And he gets to the one. The Buffaloes have uh, struggled mightily so far in this first quarter, Jim. But it, there's nothing like a big play on special teams, especially starting your drive off on the two-yard line that uh, will pump a little bit of life into the Buffalo offense. Henry, Phillips, and Warren in the backfield. Again, it's Phillips, straight ahead, touchdown.
side with just getting that one yard either, was he, Jimmy? He wanted to go all the way through that end zone, looking for red shirts to bounce off. He needed one, he picked up about four. Scott Phillips, sophomore from Monument, Colorado. He had one touchdown on the regular season. Now the extra point from Harper to tie it, and he does indeed. Scott Phillips, who came to Colorado as an inside linebacker and then switched over to fullback. Well, let's take a look at Ivy and Hansen right here as the play hits right up the middle to Phillips. And a nice job of the guard, Clint Moore, coming over with the seal block. And there's Phillips looking for red shirts to hit. So many options on this play to defend, but the first thing you got to do against an option offense is stop the fullback. From one yard out, there's no way the Tide could hold out Scott Phillips. Scott looked like Ralphie coming through that line, coming right out of the cage. Special teams, the story in the first quarter, that's for sure. A run back for a touchdown and a block by Colorado to set up their score. And Colorado really needed that special team's punt block by Wolfork because on offense, they are still on the negative side of the column with minus two yards, and yet we've got a tie score. This is Les Steckel on the right of the screen talking to Bill McCartney. Les is calling the plays tonight, and uh, he expects to be named the offensive coordinator very shortly. They have had a lot of success with the old offense, but McCartney wants to uh, move into the 90s with, with his offense, open it up, multiple formations, a lot of substitutions, and uh, something uh, where he wants to do is just play it, throw the ball. Many will remember Steckel was the head coach of the Minnesota Vikings at the age of 38. I know the Vikings will never forget it. <laughs> David Palmer from the goal line. 14-yard run back. Good coverage downfield. Tony Senna, a senior, makes the hit on the kick coverage. And tomorrow, wild card action on CBS. All get started at 12 noon Eastern with the NFL today. The Cowboys back in the playoffs. And Jimmy Johnson and Mike Ditka will duel for the first time. The winner of that game will be taking on Detroit in the divisional round of the playoffs. As Atlanta's victory today over the Saints cinched or clinched the Falcons' next appearance. It'll be against Washington next Saturday. The 15, Derek Lassick. Nice cut. In a hard-earned three or four yards. You think about that uh, ball game coming up tomorrow, Jim, and I know the Bears, or the Bears, were hoping the for the Bear weather, but uh, they're not going to get it. Uh, the, the Cowboys will come in there to uh, Soldier Field and play in very pleasant 45-degree weather, and that has to concern the Bears. They were murdered by San Francisco the last game of the season, and the Cowboys are the hottest team in football. Well, the most points that Mike Ditka's ever allowed, seeing one of his teams allow. I wouldn't want to have been at practice this week as a member of the Bears. Second and seven, and they get to Barker again, and it's Wolfort, the punt blocker. Yeah, I'll have to take play for coaching. Watch this man right here. You think the uh, football is tough game here. Watch as this helmet goes flying off. It's Jeff Bruner right there in the middle. And uh, he had help. That's brutal for Bruner. Third and 12. Quarterback draw in the game plan. And that will run out the first quarter. We'll start the second with a punting situation. And that's where all the action has taken place so far in this blockbuster bowl with the score after one Colorado seven Alabama seven will return to the blockbuster bowl after this message and a word from your local station happy holidays from channel five to you welcome back to the second blockbuster bowl Jim Nance along with Dan Fouts and Jim Gray Andrea Joyce We'll be along at halftime. 7-7 our scores. We start the second quarter, and 
Again, Dan, all of the excitement so far has happened in punting situations, and here's another guy who could break one, Darian Hagan. And wouldn't you uh, know it, he'd love to uh, put one in the end zone. This is about the same spot on the field that Palmer returned his for the 52-yarder. Colorado was trying to set up a return. Short punt by Williamson, and Hagan will just let it go. So very favorable bounce for Williamson to help the stats and backs up the Buffs to the 34-yard line. We're sideline bound right now to our man Jim Gray. Jim? All right, Jim, the All-American Center for the University of Colorado, Jay Lewenberg, is a diabetic. He injects himself twice a day with insulin. Now, he's been living with this condition for 10 years, and it really doesn't affect his football, but at halftime, he'll go in and take a little blood sample, check his blood sugar, and he'll adjust because of the stress that it can affect his diabetes. So he's got a lot to look after in this high humidity, but the trainers are not worried right now. Let's go back upstairs. Again, without a single back, Hagen fires it over to Henry. And off the mark on that one, and Darian continues to struggle in the passing game. And this time, there's no uh, pressure on him. He's been sacked twice, but he's still looking for his first completion. And right now, you, you just feel that he's struggling. He, he's not comfortable in this offense. And that brings up a question. If he continues to struggle, will McCartney replace him with Vance Joseph? Lamont Warren is the single running back. He'll run it, but he is trapped for a one-yard loss. Jeremy Nunley coming in for John Copeland and making a nice play for the Tide. So they junked the iPhone tonight. It's a whole new setup offensively for Colorado, and here's a look at it, Dan. Well, very unusual. There's three wide receivers, but the problem is not in where they're putting people. It's the guys up front. Those front five on the offensive line are not uh, doing the job, either pass protection or run blocking. Third and 11. Hagan has a little more time, but he'll still scramble out of there with it and come up shy of the first at the 40. Now that's the best play for Darian Hagan because what that this offense allows is more room for him to use his running ability. That time he had a nice gain. The unfortunate thing is he had so far to go for the first down. Colorado punting unit hustled onto the field almost before Palmer could get into place. Look at him again with a stutter step move, but Chad Brown wrestles him down right away. 48-yard punt by Berger and a four-yard run back with a flag. The key to that coverage that time was the ball was uh, about a four-and-a-half second hang time. McCartney feels that if he gets that type of hang time that his players can get down underneath it and he doesn't have to worry about a big return. There's a clip during a run back. Penalty will be paid for us half the distance from the spot. First down. Well, that will take Alabama inside of its own 10-yard line. Offensively, it's been somewhat like we expected, Dan. It's 7-7 at the start of the second quarter. We'll be right back. Gene Stallings, a man who embodies many of the traits of Bear Bryant. A Bear Bryant disciple, played for the Bear at A&M. Was an assistant for Bryant for seven years at Alabama. Then took over the head coaching job at Texas A&M in the 60s. 12-year assistant for Tom Landry and the Cowboys, and later the head coach of the Cardinals. The last year in St. Louis and three years in Phoenix. First down, Alabama from the eight. Pump fake by Barker. Look out. Might have lost it. Chad Brown was there. Recovered. Recovered by Alabama's Hammond. Matt Hammond fell on it. It was indeed a fumble. Yeah, that's no place to be on the field. Pump fake. And when you're on the one-yard line, a lot of bad things can happen here. He's got to get rid of the ball on his first choice here. That fake's okay, but it's this one that gets him in trouble. When he pulls it down, time runs out. Chad Brown, number 34, is there from the blind side and knock it loose. Chad Brown, an active first half for the junior from Pasadena. Used to sell programs at the Rose Bowl as a youngster. Toby Shields, the starting center for Alabama, being helped to the sidelines after a six-yard loss on the last play.
George Wilson will now move over to the center position from his left guard position. Second and 16, Bama from the one. Look out, that's a safety. Martin Houston is stuffed. Ryan Diet and Ted Johnson. They're going to go right up the middle, Jim. And uh, with the change in the offensive line, you see Johnson right there. He steps forward and with help down low by Renfro. Actually, it's Brian Diet down there. He makes the big play, the old high and low, a two-pointer for Colorado. Ted Johnson, a surfer from California. Looking forward to finishing up the bowl game, going home, says when I get back there, I'm gonna get the stick out and see if I can find some waves. Well, he's made some waves. The second quarter, a two-point safety, nine to seven Buffaloes. Yeah, from Southern California, just outside of San Diego. He's got the best of both worlds, doesn't he? Skiing at there at uh, Colorado this time of year, then he goes out to San Diego. That's the first Colorado safety of the year. And what the Buffaloes have been able to do with field position is what they've been unable to do with their offense. Special teams has made the plays for them, and now their defense comes up with two points. That Alabama series set up by good punt coverage by Chad Brown and a penalty tacked onto it, a clipping call that backed Alabama inside of the 10. And they retreated from there. Now the Buffalo offense should get good field position as Alabama's forced to kick from the 20. Hank Williamson with the free kick off the side of the foot, fumbled at the 50, but fell on by Colorado. Tomorrow on the NFL Today, our cameras have been following the Cowboys and the Bears as they prepare for Sunday's wild card showdown. Terry Bradshaw will have the X's and O's and the latest on all the NFL coaching changes tomorrow at noon Eastern on the NFL Today. The last word before kickoff. Welcome back to the Blockbuster Bowl. Here in the stands are 70 members of the University of Nebraska football team. They're here in Miami preparing for a New Year's Bowl game against the University of Miami. Now, they were co-Big 8 champions with the University of Colorado, but I find most of you guys, Darren Williams, to be against Colorado here in the stands. Why? Uh, the game between Nebraska and Colorado has become a big rivalry. It's no longer in the Big 8 in Nebraska and Oklahoma. So now it's a big thing. All right, Darren, you got a lot of your guys cheering here with you. Better root on Alabama. Let's go back upstairs <laughs> to Jim Nance. I'm surprised, but Colorado does call it the Big Red game, the one against Nebraska. They circle that one. A year in advance. Now from the 50. A short gain by James Hill to pull back. Two yards. This is the sixth time now that Colorado has had a first down play in their second run. Uh, we saw graphically that they not doing too well offensively. They have nine points with just three yards. But uh, they have gone away from their traditional eye bone offense to a more wide open multi-dimensional type of offense. But it... Uh, not yet worked out the kinks in that offense. Eric Curry is down for Alabama. He banged up his leg in practice here this week. And Jeremy Nunley has already come in to replace him. Curry says, hey, I'm fine. I'll, I'll walk it off. Now this was what happens so often. You just get tangled up in some of these piles here. And especially when you have all this beef coming down on top of you, there's Curry, number 80, to the bottom of the screen there. And he got the uh, worst of that pile up. Beef? Beef Curry? <laughs> kind of spicy. I'm sorry. Yeah, sorry. you bet. Second down and eight. Michael Westbrook in the game. And running the option, Hagan. High stepping for only two. The Colorado offensive old. Well, that play. You wonder how long McCartney will stay with his new offense or will he go back to the traditional eye bone where 
he features the option play by Hagen, but he told me before the game, he says, this is our new offense. We're going to stick with the uh, changing of wide receivers, open it up a little bit, and uh, give Colorado football a new look. Third down and six. Lamont Warren on the delay, smothered at the 42 by John Summons, short of the first. But McCartney is now, he's playing a field position type of game. He's satisfied with uh, having his punter, Berger, kick the tie deep in their own end and keep David Palmer as far away from uh, the other end zone as possible. Berger boots it into the end zone. I'm sure they would have liked to have kept him inside the 20, but when you got Palmer back there, you just kick it away from him. We'll take the touchback. Bama comes out to the 20. Colorado leads without a first down in the game. 9-7 has been a defensive struggle and a real struggle for these teams offensively, but not surprising when you rate the top defense Division 1A this year. Alabama third in points allowed, and Colorado had a high figure as well. Their defensive coordinator, a good one, Mike Hankwitz. He said the key to tonight's game for his defense is the play of his outside linebackers, Woolfork and Chad Brown. Both of them have come up big a couple of times. Hankwitz was a linebacker and a tight end at you know, the University of Michigan about 20 years ago. And if you want to uh, really break down some stats, Jim, uh, Alabama's rushed 16 times now for one yard. <laughs> That's two inches per rush. <laughs> so the tide is not quite rolling yet. Actually, 2.2 inches. Is that what you're Thank you, Jim. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> First from the 20, Palmer in motion. Take the toss and get it over to Palmer. Stretches it out to the 30 near the first. Ronnie Bradford had him by the ankle. Well, Palmer's the leading receiver for the Tide. And uh, Jay Barger is playing a solid football game as he has the last three. Common Sense told Gene Stallings that he's going to be his quarterback tonight. If he struggles, though, don't be surprised if we see Danny Woodson. So far, he hasn't struggled. Second down and inches. Stacy goes down the line for a moment and cuts in for the first to the 34. Broke away at first from Chad Brown. Rand Stacy closing his Alabama career tonight. What a huge season he had back in 89 when he rushed for over 1,000 yards. Led Bama to the Sugar Bowl that year. He'll close out the career ranked sixth all-time in rushing for Alabama. Parker, a good time, now comes out of the pocket. Eight of about three, Brian Diet. Got to him first. Parker is just a freshman, and one thing that uh, senior Kevin Turner told us about him yesterday was that he's a tough young man, and he's not afraid to stick his head in there. The one thing he has to learn as a quarterback is when to slide. We saw that time he's going for every inch. And he says, if you don't learn to slide, you won't stay around for your full four years. Wisdom from fullback Turner, a senior. They fake the reverse, and Stacy. He leaps for the first at the 46. That froze him. They were threatening to go with the reverse to Palmer, and that stopped the Colorado defense long enough for the big game. Well, this is a really a good fake because this is number two on the fake reverse, and the key to it is that after the fake, Palmer continues to run as if he has the ball. That allows Stacy to get to the corner and pick up just enough yards for the first down. But you can see Stallings is getting Palmer more involved in the offense. Ten minutes to go in the second quarter. Saran Stacy on first down. Good blocking for him. Into Colorado territory. Inside of the 40. And down at the 30-yard line. Matt Hammond cleared out the left side for Saran Stacy. Stacy is such a determined runner at 22-yarder. Really, he should have only got half of that because Greg Thomas, number 27 for Colorado, had him pretty good. We're going to see an outstanding block by fullback Kevin Turner that gets Stacy to the corner. 
He's in motion here. Pins the linebacker to the inside. And now watch the strength of Stacy pull away from Greg Thomas. David Palmer downfield with a block. And coming in at the last second was Roosevelt Patterson. Not this time for Alabama. One-yard loss. You see number 56 out there, Woolfork. And uh, he knows the right number to wear. That's the, the number, obviously, of Lawrence Taylor of the New York Giants. And I think every young outside linebacker playing in high school or college stands in line and, and prays that the uh, equipment staff gives him that number. Wolfberg is playing like LT so far tonight. Second down and 12. Deep pitch in the round with Palmer, only to the 30. And that 56 has been a popular number, not only because of LT, but Matt Swilling and Chris Dolman, Harvey with the Cardinals. I mean, it's really becoming the linebacker's number of choice. Jeff Lagerman, who's a converted linebacker for the Jets, has got his team in the playoffs tomorrow. But that number, uh, you have to back it up with performance, and all those fellows you mentioned, Jim, are outstanding players as well. Third down and nine. Bama from the 30 of Colorado. Look out. They get him. And a football free fell on by Kevin Turner. You could see him coming in from the right side. Beaker and Wolfert on the smash. Well, the Buffs have uh, 38 sacks on the year coming in. Two so far this evening. This is real close to another one. Again, it's the safety from the outside. Greg Thomas, 6'2", 220 pounds. Packs a big wallop on the quarterback. And that play took Alabama out of field goal range. Fourth sack here in the first half for Colorado as Eric Hamilton is held to the sideline. So Tank Williamson is in to punt near the 50. Hagan raises a hand. That football may have touched him. But it went out of bounds, so it doesn't yep. matter. But he was awfully close, too close, I'm sure, for McCartney. It was out of bounds at the one. Inside of the one. Let's go to our colleague Jim Gray with a special guest. Jim? happened to your son David who was named the head coach yesterday in fact the headlines right here in the Miami paper Shula and son what about David's appointment to the Bengals oh very proud and I, I'm just glad that he's uh, getting the opportunity he's worked hard and uh, he's going to do a good job up there uh, Cincinnati is a, uh, a fine football team and uh, I know that uh, Dave has wanted the opportunity to be a head coach and uh, Mike Brown and the Cincinnati Bengals are giving him that opportunity and I'm a proud father Jim Nance I'm sure he is a proud papa indeed. The great Don Shula from the one, Colorado, trying to get some room with James Hill. Maybe a yard is all. Not a whole lot of running room up the middle here for the Buffaloes. You see the fake by Lamont, Warren, and there's the handoff inside, and the tide is just there to swallow that one for about a half a yard gain. Lamont Warren has not seen any room tonight. A midseason find. He rushed for over 800 yards. Dangerous pass by Hagen. Still off the mark at the five-yard line. That ball might have been deflected at the line of scrimmage. Hagen is 0 for 6. Midway through the second quarter, 7.29 remaining. Colorado 9, Alabama 7. Colorado still looking for its first, first down. Third and 9, and coming up short is Warren at the 8. 
George Teague, the free safety for Bama, makes the tackle at the eight. Colorado will punt from the end zone. Same kind of situation on the field where David Palmer ran the punt back in the first quarter for an Alabama touchdown. Lewinberg to snap it to Berger. This is one that can be returned. Watch it. Ran to the near side of the field. And a nine-yard run back after a 43-yard punt. Let's go back to Jim Gray. All right, Don, continuing. There have been so many changes in the NFL. Eight of your peers have left their jobs since the end of the season, particularly Chuck Noll. What's your thoughts on all these changes? Well, that's really disturbing to me because uh, there are a lot of uh, fine football coaches that are out there now without jobs. And... Uh, as a coach, you'd like to see everybody get full opportunity to either do it or not do it, and I don't know if some of them have had full opportunity. Uh, you hate to see a guy like Chuck Noll bow out, Chuck Knox, you know, just one of the uh, uh, excellent football coaches that I've known or coached against, and then uh, some of the younger coaches uh, are also uh, out of work. So I hope everything gets straightened out and that uh, these uh, staffs get resolved. All right, Don, we'll continue with you and Mike in just a moment. Jim Nance. Chad Brown a little gimpy on the punt return coverage. Rodell Guest will come in now at outside linebacker for Colorado to replace him. You know, Jim, uh, I've had a lot of thrills in my playing career for the San Diego Chargers, but in my broadcasting career, I was lucky enough to be here for Don Shula's 300th win, and believe me, that was a great thrill to see uh, probably the greatest coach of all time pick up that uh, wonderful milestone. The 44 this time. They do run the reverse with Lee, Kevin Lee. And they'll lose tremendous yardage is Ron Wolford. Tackles him back at the 42. That's a 13-yard loss. Wolford has been the star tonight for Colorado. A sack, that big tackle for a loss, and a block punt. Again, it's a defensive play for uh, either team. They're just dominating the line of scrimmage. The outside play of the linebackers for Colorado has been the difference so far. They send Stacy out as a receiver on second and 23. Another big play defensively. Chad Brown sits out one play, comes right back, and reads that play perfectly. He's a tough guy, Jim. I mean, the guy has 16 snakes or something in his room back in Boulder. Number 34 from the left side of the screen is just going to smother Stacy in the backfield. You know what that's called? What's that? According to Robert Wool, a saran wrap. <laughs> as he took Stacy one-on-one. -on -one. Down and Parker going long for Lee. Dion figures excellent coverage for Colorado. Wonderful coverage as he cut Lee off as Lee had designs on cutting inside and making that grab. But that was a big league player, big league play by Dion figures number two. Watch him cut Lee off right here. Looks for the ball at the last moment and prevents a big gain for Alabama. Tank Williamson driving punt. Hagen now will have a return opportunity. A very short one at that. Coming right in on him was Andre Royal. He committed a personal foul to start the game on a punt coverage situation. That time he gave Hagen enough room and made a nice tackle. Back over to Jim Gray with the Shoes. All right, Jim, Mike Shuley, you played for the University of Alabama, left in 1986. You're now an assistant coach with your father. You've got a decision to make. Who are you going to go with, your brother or your father? <laughs> Wait a minute, he's with me now. What do you, what do you mean, who is he going to go with? <laughs> well, I think right now it's, uh, you know, something we haven't really talked about, but it certainly would be, it would be an honor to be considered uh, for a coaching opportunity there. But I'm very happy here at Miami to be home with the Dolphins and with my, with my father and my sisters. Well, maybe we'll have a trio in the NFL not too far away. Thanks to both of you. Congratulations to the Shoeless. Jim Nance? Well, we saw a running play for Scott Phillips that netted one yard. Phillips scored the Colorado touchdown from a yard out. 
in the first quarter. All the way back at the 12. Lemansky Hall on Lamont Warren. Well, the Tide is saying, hey, listen, we got some outside linebackers too. Number 11 is Hall. Here he is right here. Watch as he gets up the field again. Nobody to block Lemansky Hall. And he drops Warren for a big loss. Just gets inside the block there for the attempted block by Mark Henry. Third and 18. Interception at the 50. Mark McMillan. Mark McMillan inside of the 20. Mark McMillan near the goal line. A yard shy. Jim Hansen made the stop for Colorado, but the tide is just inches away from the goal line after a 49-yard run back. <laughs> <laughs> well, giving it his best Deion Sanders imitation, and he gets walloped from behind by a teammate. But I talked to McMillan on the field before the ball game. And this ball is just poorly thrown, underthrown by Hagen as he's trying to hit the wide receiver at the top of the screen all the way down the field. McMillan had to come back on this ball as it starts to quack a little bit. And now he picks <laughs> up the convoy down to the one-yard line. Everyone in tight. Right ahead for Bama. Did Stacy make it? No. Nope. You know, McMillan had an interception this year against Tennessee Chattanooga and ran it back 98 yards for a touchdown, an Alabama school record. He almost had another one tonight. And I was checking with him on how he pronounces his name because it could go McMillian, but he says it's McMillan and be ready to call it a lot tonight. I'm going to have a big night. <laughs> well, he was prophetic, wasn't he? Second and goal. Eric Lassick hit right away after the exchange. Chad Brown breaking through. That's our snake charmer. He's getting into it with everybody. <laughs> and a late flag as there was some shoving going on after the whistle. He just crashes in from the left side. Got a lot of help underneath that penetration of the oh, Buffaloes was the key. Those, are, those just do no good at all. I mean, they're just useless. So the, the only thing that they could do in that situation is have the players sit out of play. In that way, you're penalizing both teams and both players for engaging in that type of activity. But by having offsetting penalties, so what? Yeah. Under three minutes to go in the half. Colorado 9, Alabama 7. Third and goal. Stacy tries to reverse his field. Ron Wolfert makes the play again for the Buffs. Watch from the bottom of the screen. Again, it's an outside linebacker, Wolfert, that gets the penetration and forces Stacy back inside where all those gold helmets are. The Tide started this drive on the one-yard line after that interception, and now they've got to settle for a field goal. Wethington from 25. <laughs> Jeff Wall on the hold. And just barely. Ooh. Those goalposts are 18 feet, 6 inches apart. <laughs> and he used every bit of that. Bama with its fourth trip into Colorado territory. And they come away with a field goal, starting the drive from inside of the one. Bama takes the lead, a one-point lead over Colorado. Jim Nance and Dan Fouts, along with Jim Gray. Andrea Joyce coming up at halftime. She'll be joined by Mike Francesa. Talk about this coaching carousel that has been changing on a daily basis. Get an update on the playoff situation from earlier today. Greg, and Greg Gumbel and Terry Bradshaw will be with us as well. It's coming up at halftime.
Well, Jim, we predicted it, it would be a defensive struggle this evening. Big plays uh, by special teams and defense. Colorado on total offense, just 10 yards. Alabama not much better with 71 yards, but they blew a big opportunity that time to get a touchdown after McMillan's return took the ball all the way to the one yard line. They retreated before they kicked the field goal to go ahead. Colorado still without a first down. Amazing. Colorado's points on a safety and a three yard drive set up by Ron Wolford's block punt. Charles Johnson is back along with Chris Hudson. Waiting for the kick from Cole. Johnson from the 13. Quick burst out to the 34. Irving Spikes spotted him at the 34. We've got wild card action tomorrow on CBS. The Dallas Cowboys and the Chicago Bears. 12 Eastern time with the NFL today. Greg and Terry along with Leslie and Pat O'Brien. And then Pat Summerall and John Madden will call the Cowboys and the Bears tomorrow on CBS. The winner of that game plays Detroit. Everybody shifting out of the backfield. Watch the Buffs two-minute drill. Flag on the field as Hagen comes back. It's a hard-earned two. Steve Webb manning that side. Alabama was offside. So they'll play the down over. First and five for Colorado. And this man, Dan Fouts, wanted to showcase Darian Hagen tonight. I don't think this is the way he, he meant to do it. But he knew that he would have some problems Outside. because of the... On the defense, still first down. Because of the lack of practice time, just 10 practices before this game, and to uh, expect his players to assimilate a brand new offense. And he was uh, he told us he was worried of whether or not they could protect Hagen, give him time to throw. So far, that hasn't been the case. Phillips and Warren in the backfield. Hagen on the run completes the pass to Michael Westbrook. But the one thing about the Colorado offense, with Darian Hagen leading it, they're one of the best two-minute offenses in football, college football. That's Hagen's first completion of the day to a uh, teammate. And Colorado's first first down, a gain of 16. Right you are, Dan, about Darian Hagen in a two-minute drill. In his career, he's had 23 opportunities in the two-minute situation, 17 times he directed the team to scores. This pass well behind Westbrook, trying to hook up with him back-to-back -back plays. And the reason he's been successful is because he has that uh, magic type of personality, very confident. He's a good leader. His teammates look to him for leadership. Obviously, that's something uh, every quarterback should provide. And this is where it, it uh, exemplifies itself, is in the two-minute offense when the quarterback is in complete control. Second and ten, play action. Zips it over for a first, well, a reception, not a first down, but a pass to the 40 and a gain of five. It was Sean Brown, his tight end, and the Colorado leading receiver on the season. That magical season of 89 for the Buffaloes. Uh, Hagen had nine chances, nine times he drove his team for scores in the last two minutes as Lamont Warren heads to the locker room early. Play action on third and five, and Hagen with a flag on the field, fires on the run incomplete. They're going to get one of the Buffaloes for holding. So this drive is going to end just about right here because Alabama will refuse it, bringing up fourth down. One first down for Colorado in the half. It happened a moment ago on the pass play, 16 yards to Michael Westbrook. And Mark McMillan is shaken up for Alabama, Dan. The interception maker a series ago. 
It appears he has a cramp. This is uh, the type of move that trainers put on a player that uh, muscle in the back of the ham, back of the leg, the hamstring there, tightens up. So they try to straighten that leg out. They're going to accept this penalty because the foul occurred about 10 yards deep in the backfield. So this penalty, uh, when you add the 10 yards because of the penalty, adds up to about a 20-yard penalty. Yep, from the 40 of Alabama back to the Buffalo 40. Sam Shade is in to replace McMillan, who is still down on the field. Colorado will have third and 25 coming up. The one thing about McCartney and his offense is Back in 1985 at Colorado, he brought in the bone, the wishbone formation. Then he changed it to the eye bone in 89. And now he's going to this uh, multiple formation where he'll use uh, different sets, uh, more like a pro style of offense. And he wants to get a jump start, a head start on 1992 season. He figures with the 10 days of practice he's had leading up to this game, when he's got spring practice, then fall double days, uh, when he heads into that first game next year, he's going to have this offense well-tuned. Uh, he will certainly have a lot of kinks to work out of it uh, at halftime. But one thing he told us, he's going to stick with it. This is the look that uh, Colorado Buffalo football will have in the 90s. Sam Shade is in. Yeah, the first uh, part of the McCartney regime at Colorado they passed it a lot, but he had two win, a two-win season, four and seven season, a one and ten year. That's when he made the change. And look at Hagen now showing some arm strength. Passes out of bounds. Darnell Brooks, a backup tailback, was going up against Sam Shade, who had just entered the game. A tremendous effort down the sidelines by Brooks. Yeah, he, look at him concentrate on that ball. And if he could have taken one more step, he would have had a huge game for Colorado. Chance for another look at David Palmer before the half. We have one minute, six seconds to go before the intermission. Bama leads it by one, 10 to nine. And Alabama has all three timeouts. Palmer accounted for Alabama's touchdown. If you just joined us, a 52 yard punt return in the first quarter. at the 25 and Palmer lets it go 24 yard line is where the tide will start this series 36 yards on the punt no return I think Alabama is still smarting from their performance in last year's Fiesta Bowl against Louisville they were blown out by the Cardinals in that game and Many of the players mentioned to us this week that that's been in the back of their mind. They want to make up for that sad performance last January 1. Let's watch the young gun for Alabama. Parker will get it back on the flea flicker. No, he'll not have the opportunity. Colorado will be set up. Joel Steed on the recovery. Chris Anderson lateled it back to the quarterback. The tough thing about trying to run a flea flicker is you have to have the first part of it going well for you. Alabama hasn't had a whole lot of success running this uh, sweep play, and yet they try to pitch it back on the flea flicker, but there's nobody that's faked out on the play. Colorado came with the straight pass rush. Watch as uh, Barker gets the ball back. There's the hit right there by Bruner. Greg Beaker as well in there, and Steve picks up the recovery. From the 15. Lined up in the eye. Short drop by Hagen going to the corner. Too deep. Westbrook was the intended receiver. He's a tall, rangy freshman, this Michael Westbrook. Well, Jay Lewenberg knows that if he wants to play in the pros, he has to be a good pass protector. He does a wonderful job that time on Robert Stewart. This ball is just going to be thrown too far, but that could be called pass interference there on Sam Shade. 
as he is guarding and never really giving a chance uh, for Westbrook. The official must have determined that the ball was going to be caught out of bounds or that should have been passed in the third. And they get to Hagen for the third time. John Copeland. Timeout for the Buffaloes with 23, 22 seconds before halftime. The big thing McCartney has to worry about now is not to have another sack. He, he might uh, be well advised to just run the ball, get in field goal position. And you talk about field goal position now for the Buffaloes. They've had all kinds of problems in that area of their football team as well this year. Had a few blocked. Let's check out defending national champions and how they fare the year after the title. Of course, last year was a split split vote. Colorado won one poll, Georgia Tech the other. Tech already with a victory in the Aloha Bowl. Finishes 8-5 and five on the year. The year before that, Miami was 10-2. and two. Notre Dame, Miami, those were impressive marks. Penn State, remember that 86 season? Came out of the gates with three straight losses that year and finished 8-4. And, and Colorado this year started out 2-2, two and two, and McCartney went back to square one. Had a very rough uh, couple of weeks of practice, got things straightened out, and uh, put his team in position to tie for the Big 8 title. How do you like these rushing totals in the game so far, Dan? Colorado's 17 rushing attempts for four yards. And Alabama... 29 rushing attempts for three yards. How many inches per carry is that? Well, I thought you were reading my <laughs> career rushing stats there for a minute. Third down from the 21, third and 16. Buffs have one timeout remaining. Looks like a quarterback draw for Hagen. And a jarring blow at the 15 by Michael Rogers. Flags are everywhere. And the players threatening to leave the bench area. Well, John Sullins of Alabama ripped Clint Moore's helmet off. Clint didn't like it too much and went after him. Now, if this is offsetting penalties, the Buffs will be in good shape for the field goal. But you just never know how the officials are going to call this one. Sullins is number 90, and Moore number 66. There's the action right there as Hagen is going to take a big lick here, but it's on the left side of the screen here. <laughs> Sullins just pulls on the face mask and rips it off the head of Clint Moore. Well, the officials missed one there. Offsetting penalties called. I just told right there. But Sullins clearly grabbed the face mask of Clint Moore and pulled the helmet right off his head. Dead ball offsetting penalty, so it's fourth down. Gene Stalling says, oh, come on. We wouldn't do that. We wouldn't rip a helmet off a guy's head. Well, that's a senior in Sullins taking advantage of a true freshman in Clint Moore. Colorado let the clock work down to four seconds. They'll end the half with a field goal attempt. Jim Harper has had seven kicks blocked in his career. Very low trajectory. This season, Harper was eight for 13. This will be a 33-yard attempt. They could put the buffs ahead at halftime. And you know, with having seven block kicks in his career, it's amazing he has a career. <laughs> That's true. Here's a guy who has feasted on block field goals this season. In one stretch, three consecutive games for Antonio London. He got Tennessee, he got Mississippi State, and he got LSU three in a row. Colorado's made it exciting out of field goal formation this year. Remember the fake that they pulled off against Oklahoma State to win that game at the end? Robbie James, who threw the touchdown in that game to Christian Fourier, is the holder. And Alabama has called timeout to 
uh, make Mr. Jim Harper think about this field goal. This is the type of action you see at the end of ball games. Tell him, be ready for the fake. He ain't going to be on the block field goal. Be ready for the fake. Famous last words. You make sure the second day don't let him throw no down fake. Stay on the line. I think many followers of college football are still in disbelief at that call by McCartney, one of the gutsiest calls ever. Needing a field goal to beat Oklahoma State in the closing seconds, he bypassed the kick and tried a fake field goal. The pass was completed to Fourier for a victory on the road. Alabama assistants wise to the possibility of the fake. Warning Stacy Harrison, who has related to the rest of his team in the huddle. And you know the Buffaloes know a little bit about putting a kicker on ice. Remember that Nebraska game? <laughs> McCartney called three straight timeouts before they went and blocked the uh, potential game winner for Nebraska. Greg Thomas got that block. Here's a 33-yard attempt for Harper to get Colorado the halftime lead. Harper delivers. That's the end of the first half with the score. Colorado 12, Alabama 10. CBS Sports coverage of the Blockbuster Bowl will continue after this message and a word from your local station. CBS Sports coverage of the Blockbuster Bowl is sponsored by Blockbuster Video. More movies than anyone in the world. Hyundai, yes, Hyundai. Alamo, there are over 4 million miles of Alamo territory, and with Alamo, all of them are free. Federal Express, all around the world, our most important package is yours. And by Raycon, proud to be creators of the Blockbuster Bowl. Welcome to the College Football Today Halftime Report. Back at Joe Robbie Stadium in Miami, an excellent defensive showing. Colorado with just one first down late in the half leads Alabama 12-10. Hi everyone, I'm Andrea Joyce. Let's get started with the news of the day. A sad note to report tonight, at least eight people were killed and 27 others injured at a charity basketball game led by rap musicians. It happened at a New York City college, apparently when people without tickets stormed the gymnasium. Details are still coming in and officials say there may be more injuries. In other news, Ray Perkins has a new job tonight. He's been hired as the head coach at R Arkansas State, which is moving to Division 1A next season. Among other stops, you'll recall Perkins coached Alabama and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Speaking of the Bucs, contrary to published reports, former New York Giants head coach Bill Parcells maintains he has not signed a contract to become the new head coach of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And for more on this and other stories, we'll bring in the guy I always like to call whenever we're trying to find out who's been hired or fired, our Mike Francesa. And uh, gee, Mike, seems like old times. How are you? Happy holidays, Andrea. All right, Mike, uh, you do a, a weekly NFL show with Bill Parcells. You guys are friends. What can you tell us? Well, I talked to Bill tonight, and he told me, number one, he denies those stories, especially the ones emanating out of Chicago, and that, number two, he has made no decision at this time. Mike, there were, of course, some other NFL coaching news made uh, during the week. David Shula, 32 years old, named as the Bengals' new coach. What do you think of that? I was really surprised by this. I mean, there were a lot of qualified guys around the league. Here's a guy whose stock had really fallen. I don't think he expected to be a head coach. I was very much shocked, and it, I think it's been a very strange week from, in Cincinnati from the whole thing surrounding Sam White to Shula being named head coach. And frankly, I think if his last name weren't Shula, I don't think he'd be the head coach of the Bengals tonight. Let's talk a little college football now. There's a real possibility that for the first time since 1973, we may have two teams end the season with perfect records, Washington and Miami. Now, if that happens, who, in your opinion, is number one? Well, first, let me say I'm an AP voter, so I have voted Miami number one for two reasons, because they went to Tallahassee and beat Florida State, 
and they beat Penn State. They beat two of the top five teams in the country, in my estimation. Washington didn't beat any. Now, if Miami wins the game substantially or wins it in solid fashion, they're number one. But you have to leave the door open for Washington because they did beat Nebraska and did it very well late in the game in Lincoln early in the season. So if Washington should win by a good amount and Miami struggles to beat uh, Nebraska, I think you have to leave the door open for Washington to be number one, but it's only open a little bit. So with all of this talk, though, about who's number one, is there a possibility that this might be a dangerous distraction for either one of these teams? I think both Miami and Washington have to be very careful to go out and play their opponents, not to worry about each other, because when you do that and you're worried about what happens after we win the game, a lot of times you don't win the game. So, yeah, I think that is something they have to pay attention to in the next couple of days. Mike, let's just play a little bit of that what-if game that we used to play. Let's say that both Miami and Washington lose their games. I would say that Michigan makes the strongest case for number one. <laughs> Gee, what a surprise coming from you, an old Wolverine yourself. But frankly, I don't think Florida can win a national championship because playing Notre Dame, which finished the season being a very poor defensive team, I don't think you gain much by beating Notre Dame in the Sugar Bowl. I think if Michigan can beat Washington and Miami should lose, they can win a national championship. So I think it's Miami, then Washington, and then, of course, Michigan. Mike, it's always great to hear your insights. Always great to see you. Thanks again for uh, helping us out tonight. Thanks, Andrea. And when we come back, a review of today's NFL playoff games. We'll be joined by Greg Gumbel and Terry Bradshaw in New York. If this band sounds like a million bucks, folks, you are right. It is the world-famous Alabama Million Dollar Band. With the start of the Bulls, college football has entered its second season, and so has the NFL. First-round playoff action got underway today, and joining us live from New York on this Saturday night, our NFL Today host, Greg Gumbel and Terry Bradshaw. Happy holidays to you both. Thank you, Happy Andrea. Holidays, Andrea. Same to you, and uh, same to you, too, Mr. Bradshaw. Too, there, Mr. Thank you very much. Yes, uh, NFL playoff action indeed got underway in full force today in Kansas City, Missouri, and in New Orleans, Louisiana. We'll start you off with what happened in KC. More than 78,000 were on hand for the first playoff game in the history of Arrowhead Stadium. The fans saw Steve DeBerg get the game's only touchdown with the pass to Fred Jones right there. The Kansas City defense made it stand up, and the Raiders didn't get much help from rookie Todd Marinovich. Todd Marinovich, four interceptions today. The previous week, three touchdown pass. This is just too much pressure on a young quarterback, Greg. After the game, head coach Art Shell of the Raiders lamenting the lost opportunities his team had in the 10-6 defeat. You, you come away with three points, it hurts you all the time. You need to get to seven, and we just did not get that done. We have a feel for everybody that's, that's left in, the, in, this, in this playoff game, and um, I, I think that we have a great opportunity to play together, and we keep playing the way we are to win it all, and that's what it's about, baby. The Chiefs lost linebacker Derek Thomas in the second period. He was taken to the hospital with an accelerated heart rate. He's staying overnight, but the Chiefs expect him to play next week. Now, the Chiefs will be at Buffalo unless the New York Jets beat the Houston Oilers. Then the Jets would be at Buffalo, and Kansas City would make the trip to Mile High Stadium to play the Denver Broncos. In the NFC, at the Superdome in New Orleans, the Saints hosting the Atlanta Falcons, and the Falcons broke the tie with under three minutes to play. Hey, Michael Haynes, a simple five-yard hitch. When you have a cornerback that plays that far off, you don't need to throw a 61-yard pass, just throw a hitch. Michael Haynes catches the five-yard hitch and goes to 61 yards. Meanwhile, the Saints trying to play catch-up here it resulted in probably the weirdest play of the playoffs. Well, this was a bad throw by Bobby Aber, driving the Saints back to tie the game up. Now you see a little bit of this. There's McCire now he's laddles off to Deion Sanders. Now it's showboat time. And this is great stuff, but this could have very well been a fumble. Gracious Jerry Glanville. If we'd have lost this, I would have hoped that the uh, that the Saints went the distance. Uh, 
Uh, the fact that we won it, we're going to try to carry the torch for the uh, for the NFC West. It's a great win for us. Uh, you know, we've got a little at stake going back to Washington because they beat us pretty good last time. Uh, Andre Rise and myself, Mike Ken, Fralick didn't play much. Uh, so we're going to go out there and we'll play hard. Falcons have a date in D.C. at RFK Stadium next Saturday. The NFL today at noon Eastern time. And in the other NFC playoff game, the winner of the Dallas Bears game will travel to Detroit to play the Lions. Let's go back to that Chiefs-Raiders game earlier today. You and I debated all day long about whether or not you think Todd Marinovich should have started the game for the Raiders. You don't think he should have stayed in the game. If you have a veteran quarterback, Schrader is, and he's been injured, but he is healthy, then you start the veteran. I think you start Schrader. Now, don't get carried up with what Marinovich did the last week against the Chiefs, because that stuff ceases when you take your team on the road to play an arch rival like the Chiefs. You start Schrader, he doesn't play well, you bring in the hero kid, and all the pressure's off of him. And another thing, if you're going to start him, don't throw the ball in the middle of the field. Throw the ball to the outside, quick hit your screens where he can see where his vision's not covered up by a bunch of big players over the middles where you get all your problems. All right, two games played today, two more scheduled for tomorrow. Now, we will see you at noon Eastern time on the NFL today, and then it'll be Dallas against the Chicago Bears. Feelings about the game tomorrow? You bet there are on both sides. We ended up 11-5, and five and we're in the postseason. I love saying it. I'm going to say that again. We're in the postseason. You know what I mean? We are in a new part of the season, a new phase, a single, lim- a single elimination tournament. And, and our goal is, is, as has always been, is to get to the Super Bowl. We've got a very young team, but guys are excited. We're starting to think that, hey, we can play with anybody in this league because we've done it. You lose, you go home. And I don't think anybody here is ready to go home. I came here in those first few years. It was purgatory. It was ugly. You know, we were in the bottom, bottom, bottom. You know, we didn't win anything. Now... We're back on that climb back to heaven. Climb back to heaven. Yeah. Now. Because uh, the better weather in Chicago, you give uh, the Cowboys a better than average shot. I haven't said this all year, but I really think the Cowboys are a team that can throw the football, they can run the football, they play surprisingly good defense, and they play well on the road. Don't forget the upsets, especially Washington. And also, if Burline doesn't play well, Aikman's ready to play and he's healthy. I think Johnson will take Burline out if he doesn't play well early and you'll see Aikman in the football game. All right, the other uh, playoff game tomorrow in the AFC. The New York Jets travel to Houston to play the Oilers. The Oilers won the first meeting back at the Meadowlands 23-20 to early. Yeah, but the Oilers are a fine football team, and I, I think they feel like they don't get the respect. Look for the Warren Moon tomorrow, have a big game. I think the Oilers win this game going away. All right, I'll see you tomorrow. Okay, I'll be there. <laughs> Andrea, that is it. We'll see <laughs> be here at noon Eastern time tomorrow with the NFL Today. Back to you and Joe Robbie Stadium. Hey, th- hey, thanks, guys. Uh, we appreciate you staying up late with us. And, of course, we'll be seeing Terry in just a couple of days down in Dallas. Just a reminder, on New Year's Day at 1.30 Eastern Time, CBS will bring you the Mobile Cotton Bowl Classic. It's Texas A&M and Florida State with a special appearance by Terry Bradshaw as our game analyst. And that'll do it for us down here. We will send you back to Jim Nance, Dan Fouts, and Jim Gray after these messages. Colorado hoping that a victory tonight after the bowl season could put them in the top 10 in the final rankings. Leading at halftime, 12 to 10 over Alabama. Jim Nance along with the Dan Fouts. And Dan, we really knew going into this game that we were headed for one that really had a great chance of going right down to the last second. And we would see some unusual things happen. And that's been the case so far. Well, it's been special teams that have provided the excitement. Uh, that great punt return by David Palmer of 52 yards got things rolling for Alabama. The uh, great move they made with the hesitation was outstanding. And then all the red shirts to convoy him into the end zone. But Colorado had some uh, special teams play as well. The block punt by Wolfert from the right side, the second man in, comes clean. You're not going to get in any cleaner than Wolfert does here. The ball goes out of bounds at the two-yard line, and Scott Phillips took it in for Colorado's only touchdown. Wolfrick has uh, really been the star so far for Colorado, and the Buffaloes lead it. Harper with a field goal to end the first half from 33 yards. It's 12-10 Buffaloes. Second half about to start right after this. CBS Sports coverage of the Blockbuster Bowl is sponsored by Aflac, insuring over 35 million people worldwide. 
Budweiser with that clean, crisp, cold taste. Nothing beats a Bud. Mylata at Asset. My doctor said Mylata. And by Norwegian Cruise Line. Colorado leading, although they managed only one first down in the first half. Let's get the word now from Coach Bill McCartney visiting with our Jim Gray. Bill, you guys have the lead, so you have to feel fortunate, but you've installed a new offense tonight that's accumulated only 31 yards and one first down. Will you stick with it here in the second yeah, half, or will you change? We're going to stick with what we're doing. Uh, it's tough to do it in a short time, but this will help us. We'll go into spring football. We'll keep working on it, and then we'll go into the fall, and uh, we'll be better. We'll have trouble moving on them with the, whatever we were going to do, so we decided to go ahead and make the change now. Quite a test for a ball. Good luck in the second half. Thank you. Well, Dan, he's committed to it, as you said, taking it into the 90s, his offense, and it all starts tonight. And it all started with Ralphie. We look at the uh, second half, Jim, and I think the big thing you got to look forward to is uh, they've got to improve these stats. Remember, the game started with Ralphie stumbling out of the uh, cage uh, as she took her first lap around the field. Well, this new offense has stumbled as well. Well, we've even broken it down for you to inches per carry in the first half. Dan, that seems to be your favorite stat of the night. We can't talk in terms of yards per rush. Colorado, 22 inches per rush. Alabama, a measly four. Well, you asked me if I knew what those stats were. There you have it. <laughs> 28 total plays with no gain or a loss of yardage. Colorado to start the second half with possession. Hudson on the run back. Out to the 35. Sam Shade on the hit. see what type of adjustments the Buffaloes have made for their pass protection. Hagen just completing one pass in that first half. Got two completed, actually. But he's been under all types of pressure from that Alabama front. Two out of 12 for Hagen in that first half. Mark McMillan is in the secondary for Alabama. He was hurt just before the half. Here's Brooks, back up tailback. His first rush, and he'll lose yardage. 29 plays in the game now for no gain or less. Curry and Copeland. Curry also returning to the Alabama lineup. They're being helped off the field at one time. We should uh, point out for Colorado, they lost their offensive coordinator between the last game and the preparation for this bowl game. Gary Barnett, offensive coordinator, is named the head coach at Northwestern. Second down pass play. Hagan. Way out of bounds, and ooh, one assistant really paid for it. I hope the gentleman is going to be all right, but well, Dan, happened, he took a big blow there. Yeah, he took the big blow, and then he hit the back of his head on the ground. And never saw Westbrook. He was looking at the ball. Watch this collision by one of the... Alabama assistant coaches here on the sidelines trying to get out of the way, but watch what happens after the hit. That oh, really boy. smarts. Mm. My goodness. Mm. This is Mal Moore, the assistant head coach of offense. And he got hit by Teague and Westbrook. Let's hope he's all right. Al Moore, a longtime Alabama man, a coach for some 20 years on the staff with the Bear, quarterback of the Orange Bowl team from Alabama back in 62, one of the quarterbacks. Gene Stallings brought him onto the staff as soon as he was named the coach two years ago. And he coached with Gene in Phoenix with the Cardinals. Third down for Colorado, third and 12. Another jump pass in the area of the tight end, Sean Brown. 
And I'm not sure that Hagen means to jump when he throws this ball, but you got to remember he's only about five foot ten. Even Mal, the old smelling salts on the sidelines. It's a good sign that he's up. He's going to have a heck of a headache there this evening. Berger with a big high boomer. Great punt. Backs Palmer to the seven. Two or three guys take a shot at him, and everyone else converges thereafter. Now that hesitation move, that dead leg stop and go that he worked so well that first punt of the evening. He's not getting with, no. very far with it now. Not this time. Mal Moore is back up on the sidelines. The assistant coach for Alabama just spoke to him. He said he's okay. He took a blow to his head, got some smelling salts, lost his balance a little bit, lost where he was in the stadium for a second, but now he's all right. Says he's going to be back coaching. Let's go back upstairs to Jim. He's going to set a real example to his Alabama team. He's going, to, he's going to coach Hurt. Yeah, you don't see that happen very often, but I guarantee you he has a slight concussion at least after that blow. First down, burst. Saran Stacy across the 30 to the 43-yard line. Run out by Ronnie Bradford, 33 yards for Stacy. This is real basic football play for Alabama. It's the old lead play. Watch the fullback lead Stacy up the middle in a big hole as the Colorado linebackers run out of the way. Nice block by Turner on Beekert. And now the inspiration of Mal Moore gets Stacy Saran 33 yards on first down. 15 carries for 60 yards for Saran Stacy. And again, working the middle for a nice gain. Give him six on that one. Boy, and when you see a running back go straight up the middle, hit the inside linebacker head on, as Stacy hit Rodney Helton that time, and then drag him forward, that's a big play psychologically for the Alabama offense because they drive the one of those tough inside plugging linebackers onto his back. Second down and four. First down, inside of the 40. He's headed for a 100-yard game the way he's going now. 13 more for Saran Stacy. Lead block by Kevin Turner. Well, Turner and Stacy have worked together a lot in their career at Alabama, and it's good teamwork here as Turner just turns out Beaker. Big hole up the middle again, and basically it's just sound, straight-ahead football for Alabama. They tried the toss play wide earlier in this game. They've made the adjustment at halftime, and they're going right at the Colorado defense. Derek Lassick now in a tailback on first down. They play action fake to Lassick. Barker flings it, complete to Lee. To the 10. When you run the ball well, the next thing you want to do is to come with a little play-action pass. Watch the fake. Same formation, the I formation, faking the ball up the middle to Stacy. Look at there's no pass rush at all because they were worried about that fake. And Parker throws his best pass of the evening, sets up the uh, tied offense at the 10-yard line. This Alabama team responding now after the blow to their offensive quarter. Offensive coordinator and quarterback coach Mal Moore. Best drive of the night and first down run for three is Stacy. Cut under by Ted Johnson. You know, you talked about Barker looking sharp on that throw. He is six out of nine for 87 yards. Mike Hankwitz, I'm not sure he expected the freshman slinger on the other side to be looking this good. I'm not sure that Gene Stallings expected him to look this good, but the thing that Gene told us is that uh, he's played awfully well for a freshman the last three games. That's a pretty good adjustment at halftime by the Tide. Saran Stacy met by his numeral counterpart, 27, Greg Thomas. And Dan, uh, your diagnosis of Mal Moore was right on the money. He did indeed suffer a slight concussion. That's the word now from the Alabama bench. 
while having suffered numerous slight concussions of my own in my playing career. Uh, pretty easy to call. Watch this formation here. David Palmer's at quarterback. He has shifted behind the center. And a flag on the field. Quarterback draw for Palmer. Touchdown Alabama, but it may have been a motion penalty against the tie. I think you got it exactly right. Big mistake for Alabama. We have an illegal substitution. The man came in with a play and did not stay in for one play. What happened there is uh, one of the messengers for Gene Stallings went in, gave the play in the huddle, and then left the huddle, came off to the sidelines. That's illegal, and that really ticked off our official. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he, he really did relay that call with a little anger in the voice. He felt slighted. He wasn't <laughs> reported to. <laughs> this is what we talked about earlier. Watch Lee come into the huddle now, and he will go right to the players assembled in that huddle and call the play. Now, Barker will give the snap count, but Lee will tell everybody what the play is. Well, that spoiled an opportunity for David Palmer. He takes one snap and finds the end zone. Would have been his second score of the evening. But now it's third and goal to go from the 13. Barker is back at quarterback. Barker was in the uh, formation that time as a wide receiver as he and Palmer switched positions. Palmer is out of the game. Slot formation left. Third and goal. Stacy at the eight. Reaches for it and gets it. job by Jay Barker reading the blitz of Colorado going to the open receiver there's nobody covering Saran Stacy as he grabs this ball and now the outstanding effort to reach across the goal line for the touchdown they're going for two he was able to fight off the tackle attempt by Dion figures and a timeout called from the line by Barker's Bama will try the two-point conversion Neon figures should have had him at the three. But Stacey, a great play here. Yeah, and a great drive for Stacy. Five rushes for 55 yards, and this one reception of 13 yards and six inches for the touchdown. That's uh, Stacy's first touchdown reception of the year. Couldn't have come at a better time. I tell you, it's his second touchdown reception of his career. The other one was on CBS back in 89 against Tennessee. A 75-yard touchdown on a screen pass against the Volunteers in that shootout. Hey, check this, uh, Dan. I was just looking. Was Saran's left foot out of bounds first? Well, this is what I love about college football is we don't have any instant replay review by anybody sitting upstairs. Well, That's a touchdown whether yep. he stepped out or he went down or he didn't reach far enough. I love it. You came to Joe Robbie and you were looking for the replay booth. <laughs> yeah, it was right there with Robbie. Let's go, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. I think we may see Palmer back at quarterback. Absolutely, and watch for him to roll out the old uh, student body right or left, and they want to use his running ability. Real smart play. Good choice by uh, Mal Moore and Gene Stallings. Jay Barker will not quarterback the two-point attempt. And he's on the sidelines. Seven out of ten, 100 yards, and a touchdown for Barker. Watch Palmer now. Freshman speedster. Net right away. Oh, able to break away from Chad Brown, but not make it on the second effort. Ted Johnson backed up Brown, and it's 16 to 12, Bama. 
They're going to run the option play down the line, but again, it's an outside linebacker. This time, Chad Brown, number 34, that makes the big hit. But Palmer keeps his feet. Now he runs into Ted Johnson, and they keep him out of the two-point extra. Cotton Bowl, New Year's Day, Blockbuster Bowl 2 tonight. Jim Nance and Dan Fouts, Jim Gray on the sidelines. As Colorado sees its lead get away here in the third quarter. Alabama with an impressive possession and a touchdown pass to Saran Stacy. And wouldn't you have loved to have been a fly on the wall in the Alabama locker room at halftime and listen to uh, Gene Stallings address his ball club probably in the manner of the great Bear Bryant. Whatever he said, and it was uh, had a lot to do with just let's go right at the Buffalo, uh, the Colorado Buffaloes, because a lot of those runs by Stacy were right up the middle. Cole to Johnson from the five. Across the 30, big run. Charles Johnson to the 38, 33 yard run back and a report now from Jim Gray. All right, Jim Nance, a big part of the Colorado offense will be missing in the second half. Lamont Warren, the fine tailback, separated his shoulder in the first half. Lamont, how are you feeling? Well, I'm further aggravated, so uh, it's definite I'll be having surgery right after the season. It's been dislocated, it's been happening before. How much of a disappointment is this to be out of the bowl game now? Well, I mean, you know, I've been looking forward to the bowl since the beginning. I'm pretty disappointed. But, you know, the team, we have a good backup, Darnell Brooks. He'll do fine. All right, Lamont, good luck in surgery. Feel better. Let's right. go back upstairs. Here's a pass play working to Westbrook. Look, let him go to the 30. Michael Westbrook, touchdown. One play drive for Colorado. Alabama's been putting a lot of pressure on Hagan. They go with the wide receiver screen. They let the uh, tied defensive line come in. He hits Westbrook over the middle, and the freshman goes the distance for Colorado. McCartney looked up to the scoreboard as though he was contemplating uh, and adding up the figure, should I go for a two? But the smart play here is the single point, and they get it. Three-point lead now for the Buffaloes. Michael Westbrook, freshman from Detroit, set a freshman receiving touchdown mark this year at Colorado. He scores at the bowl as well. Freshman Michael Westbrook goes into Colorado Bowl history. It's the longest play from scrimmage in Colorado's 16 bowl appearances. 62-yard touchdown catch and run to quickly regain the lead. And Westbrook is the key to this new offense because of his versatility. He can play a wing back or a wide receiver, and he has a lot of speed. So McCartney's offense uh, works a little bit better here in the second half. 19-16 Buffaloes with 10.36 to go in the third quarter. David Palmer running it back from the three. And near the 25. We talked about the uh, screen pass. Watch, uh, here's Westbrook, first of all, but also watch the center, Lewenberg, and the right tackle, Hanson. They're going to get downfield too far, and they get a, the Buffaloes get away with this one. Watch as Westbrook makes the grab. Lewenberg is five yards beyond the line of scrimmage. But this is what uh, McCartney loves, is this speed as Westbrook pulls away from Teague with the strength and the speed to get in for six. Alabama first down from the eye formation. And Stacy, again a good gainer. Straight ahead for the tailback. George Wilson with a good block. And eight yards for Saran Stacy. And this is more like it, Jim. We, we saw just a miserable first half as far as both offenses are concerned. Now, both teams are gearing it up a little bit. Uh, Colorado gets a big play to Westbrook, but Alabama continues to pound away at the middle of the Buffalo 
defense. Stacy now with 90 yards rushing on the night. Second down and two. Evan Turner, first down. Now Kevin Turner's career has spanned uh, an interesting era in Alabama football. At first, when he was in high school, he was recruited a little bit by Ray Perkins, who was named today the head coach at Arkansas State. Later, he played for Coach Bill Curry and now Gene Stalling, so he lapped over three regimes in Crimson Tide. Football. First down with classic running. Lassick slashing. Look at him. Get to the 45 of Colorado. And they're going to get a face mask uh, tacked on the end of this one. Lassick had a chance to go out of bounds, but show the type of player he is. Took the hit and got extra yardage. 17 yards on the run, plus yardage on the penalty. Watch as he bounces to the outside beyond Wolf. Wolfwork there, and now with the chance to go out of bounds, he lowers his head. There's the face mask by figures, and he can't even bring him down with a face mask. It's been a rough quarter for figures. He was run over by Stacy, and Stacy got a touchdown on the last possession. That time, Lassick made a move on him. First down from the 40 of, Buff of the Buffaloes. Leonard Renfro wrapping up Martin Houston after a short gain. Yeah, yeah, I'm right here. You know you're going to hear from your coach when you let a long pass play go against you, and they're trying to figure out how to defense that uh, screen pass. But what they ought to be doing is talking to the officials and saying, hey, look, check out those offensive linemen down the field. Another timeout called by Alabama. The tide left with one. Right, this is a close game, just a three-point lead for Colorado. You know that Alabama would love to have those timeouts at the end of this one. Touchdowns in the third quarter. And Bama on the move. Second and seven from the Colorado 37. They got the backup running backs in the game. Martin Houston, the fullback. Derek Lassick, the tailback. Chad Brown in on the quarterback. Barker gets away. Completes it to Busky, his tight end at the 12-yard line. Mark it at the 14, actually. A 23-yard pass play. Yeah, Barker really shows a lot of strength here as he pulls away from Brown on the outside here and gives his receiver a chance to make the grab. The defender had his back to this pass. As you can see, the linebacker there, actually it's a safety, Eric Hamilton. He never saw this pass. It was underthrown, but Busky saw it all the way. Stacy. Hit first by Chad Brown. Did you see Stacy on that play? That was designed to go outside, but he knows he hasn't had a whole lot of success going out there. All his yards have been right up the middle. He said, heck with that toss to the outside. I'm going right up right up the middle. Took it down about the 12. First down. Stacy told us, by the way, the seniors have been practicing this week. We've sent a message to the younger guys on the team. We're here to win. And Stacy again on the run, this time to the 11. Will be third and seven. Joel Steed, the middle linebacker. The mid, uh, middle linebacker, I should say the nose tackle. Steed has had, other than the fumble recovery, a rather quiet night so far. He went through uh, a scare in the spring when a strain of mononucleosis strapped his body, lost 30 pounds. His glands were so swollen, he couldn't swallow. Here's the pass toward the end zone. Is it a catch? Yes, touchdown Alabama. Kevin Lee. And he'll take some turf home with him. You know he doesn't want anybody to touch it. 
wonderful catch and a perfect throw by Parker as he led him perfectly. And the officials were right on top of it. Going up and down the field, offenses are taking control. Parker's second touchdown pass of the quarter. Weathington adds the extra point. 23 to 19, Alabama. Just a simple fade pass for Alabama. Parker throws it in the perfect spot. He leads his receiver, but Lee fights to the inside. Tight coverage by Chris Hudson. Well, that's a good catch and a good ball. Alabama with a 90-yard drive and a 75-yard drive in the third quarter. Now leading 23-19. It's really the exact opposite of what we saw in the first half, Dan. You obviously have to think that both coaches made some pretty good adjustments in that first half at, at the halftime in the locker rooms. But you also wonder about the defenses. If they think that uh, they were rolling so well in that first half, they're kind of taking the second half off. The key for Alabama in that last drive was the play of their quarterback, Barker. He hit four for four for 75 yards and the touchdown. For those just joining us, it, it still stands as one first down for Colorado in this entire game. Yet the Buffaloes have 19 points. Ooh, a pooch kick. Fielded by Colorado with a fair catch. Sean Embry at the 36. Here's the scoring so far in this game. David Palmer started it with a 52-yard punt return for a touchdown, his fourth of the year. Phillips with a one-yard plunge to tie it. A safety forced by Johnson and Diet. Then Wethington with a field goal for Bama to lead by one just before the half. Last play of the half. Harper from 33. In the third quarter, Stacy on a touchdown catch and run. They missed the two-point try. Westbrook, a one-play drive, 62 yards, and Bama just coming back a moment ago to Lee for a 12-yard score. And here Colorado again with a play for no gain. Darnell Brooks on the run. Antonio London on the hit. Actually a loss of three. It's going to be very tough for Colorado to mount any type of running attack now that Lamont Warren is on the sidelines with that separated shoulder. Trying to play with a brace on that shoulder. Knew he was going to have surgery after this game, but uh, it didn't hold up. Second down, 13. Hagan with some time. And look at this to Charles Johnson. He should have added it to 25. Shoulda, woulda, and coulda, but he didn't. Ball was perfectly thrown by Hagen. He throws a real flat trajectory ball, but this one is right on the money, and Johnson just flat drops it. Both hands on it. Almost too good a pass. Would have scored easily, five yards behind the defenders. Third down, 13. Hagen flushed out. Nowhere to hide at the 34. Three downs and out for the Buffaloes. Six minutes to go, third quarter. Bring on David Palmer for Alabama. And I wonder if Palmer has thought about giving up that uh, stop and go move and just running hard after he makes the grab. Fair catch. At the 30. 36 yard punt. Colorado on third down. 0 for 11 in picking up the first. Well, the tied offense on a roll in this quarter. Two possessions, two long drives for touchdowns, and they're back on the field again, the offensive unit. You ran, that you offensive ran line of the tide has really uh, provided good pass protection for Barker here in the second half. Okay, here's 
From the 30, Stacy and Turner in the backfield. Play action fake to Stacy. Barker across the middle, right into the hands of Colorado's Ronnie Bradford. And he runs it back to the Alabama 43. Intended for Prince Wembley. Parker makes a big mistake here. Watch the coverage outside here by Bradford as the receiver comes down on the post. It's almost as if Bradford is running this pattern. He reads the coverage. Now he's going to cut inside the receiver, go for the ball, and uh, that is a perfect strike to the defender. A big play by Colorado's defense. Sets up the buff offense in good shape. Ronnie Bradford. He loves these bowl games. He blocked the Notre Dame point after last year. That was the difference in the Orange Bowl. A one-point Buffalo victory. Hagan almost got it to Rico Smith. And so a block point after last year that was so critical in that game against the Irish and an interception to slow down Alabama tonight Hagan three out of 17 passing for 83 yards and a touchdown but in the second half he did hit that one touchdown to Westbrook and really uh, Charles Johnson should have made the grab on the last series of plays Darnell Brooks is the single back second down 10 Hagan just looking everywhere great coverage downfield by Bama he ducks under Robert Stewart, gets back to the line of scrimmage. This is what you call a coverage sack. Uh, there's just no place for Hagen to go with this ball. He had all his receivers on medium routes, hook routes, and now nobody breaks to the clear. You can clap your hands all you want, but when you're surrounded by two <laughs> linebackers, you're not open, buddy. And he'll go back to the, the huddle and he'll tell Hagen, hey, listen, man, I was wide open. <laughs> the receivers lament. Third and 11. Hagen running out of there again. Picks up two. Lemansky Hall took his feet away. Three downs and out for Colorado. Super job of Alabama's defense stiffening there after the uh, costly turnover that wasn't so costly. Berger angling this one. And I think he didn't cut off enough yardage. Spotted at the 23. Only an 18 yard effort. We've got more bowl action coming up. New Year's Day. CBS in the Cotton Bowl. Hand in hand again, Florida State and Texas A&M. This year, Florida State trying to set the Cotton Bowl on fire. Heisman Trophy runner-up Casey Weldon will lead Florida State against the nation's top defense, Texas A&M. Wednesday afternoon, 1.30 on CBS Sports. And you get to work with another old has-been quarterback, huh? <laughs> Terry Bradshaw will be in the booth. <laughs> Dan, you'll be preparing for next week's Atlanta-Washington playoff game. And here's Derek Lassick twisting to the 26. And uh, let's check in with Jim Gray. All right, Jim. You know, these two teams have been here all week. There have been several functions going on. They've had a lot to do. They got tired of seeing each other at all the press conferences and the banquets and so forth. It's like Jade Lewenberg told us, we didn't come to party with these guys. We came to beat them. And as you can tell in the field, these guys are tired of socializing. Jim. They have now slipped back in at quarterback David Palmer. Wizard gets out to the 30. That should have been a loss of about five. Another nifty move. He broke away from Wolford. Give him three yards uh, on the run. And that's really what Stallings has in mind is just give him the ball and let him use his natural ability. It would help if he got a little bit better blocking on that play, but you can see what he can do without any at all. Barker comes out of the game. He was in the huddle. 
and heads back to the sideline, so Palmer will handle the snap again. It looks like it's his series. Third down and three. Never a chance. Chad Brown broke through on Palmer. He's hit by John Clay also. Well, he's gonna, he wants to throw this ball, but watch when he gets in position to throw it. He looks up, and there's just nothing but white shirts there. Close to a face mask there on Beekert. Here's our run back for Colorado. And Hagen was not on the return, it was Rico Smith. 39 yard punt, five yard return. Football at the Colorado 38. At the end of this game, uh, the Blockbuster folks will select a player of the game, and we'll let you know late in the fourth quarter. Quickie pass to Henry, too high. And it could be, very well be, a defensive player that wins that award, especially if you look at, if you split it in half and give it uh, half to the first half of the game. And <laughs> Offensive player maybe in the second half here. There's Les Steckel calling the plays for Colorado. Looks like the coach has got to work some things out as well. Looks like it's going to be a busy offseason. Implementing the new offense. Flags on the field as soon as the snap was handled by Hagen. See number 10 in the background. He's a uh, Possible quarterback in the future here, Cordell Stewart from Marrero, Louisiana. The thing that coaches uh, obviously like about Stewart is he's six foot two and he's got a 4 4 40 time. And uh, he makes plays in practice a la Randall Cunningham and Major Harris. Second down. 15. This will get very little yardage back. Mark Henry tackled right away by George Teague. I'd say if you had an opportunity to have a Randall Cunningham or even a Major Harris type college quarterback, your program would be in pretty good shape. Well, Stewart will uh, compete with Vance Joseph for the starting job uh, come spring training. Both of the quarterbacks backing up Hagen, Joseph and Stewart, come from the same town before mentioned Marrero, Louisiana. Hagan on a line to Rico Smith and a first down at the 50. We talked about Hagan being five foot ten and that, that may be stretched it a little bit but it, this is his uh, strong suit is throwing the deep out. He does have a strong arm and Smith gives him a nice cushion as he drives it defensive back deep and makes the catch on the sidelines. First third down conversion and 13 tries and Hagen no time to get that one released. Michael Rogers freshman with a sack the fifth Alabama sack of the night. Well, we said that Darian Hagen has presided over the finest stretch in Colorado history, a national championship, three Big 8 titles. He never lost a Big 8 game as a starter, 18-0-1, and he leaves with Colorado's total offense mark. Second and 14. And coming back to get it is Westbrook in Alabama territory at the 45. 30 seconds remaining in the third quarter. And that's as tough a throw as a quarterback is asked to make. Running to your left as a right-handed quarterback and even running away from the line of scrimmage. He threw a nice pass and Westbrook helped him out a, a great deal by coming back to the ball. Colorado just used a timeout. Leaving them with two. You know, Hagen told us that some point tonight around one o'clock and uh, he forecasts 
quite accurately the the, the, the finish time of this game. He said somewhere <laughs> around 1 o'clock tonight I'll, I'll have my last pass in, the, in an organized football game. He's going to play in the Japan Bowl, but he's not going to be used as a quarterback there, Dan. Uh, McCartney plans on showcasing his talents there as well. Use him as a running back, as a receiver a little bit, and of course he'll do some kick returning. Uh, Hagen envisions next year as uh, being a utility player for an NFL team much in the mold of Brian Mitchell the Washington Redskins a former option quarterback that has turned into a fantastic kick returner for the skins but this is a smart move by McCartney he has not been very successful with his third down conversions this evening just one out of 13 so this one he knows is a big one he called the whole team over there to make sure they know what exactly to do Third and five on Alabama turf. From the 45, three receivers right. Even rolling now, planting, and a man open. The pass under throw. Almost a second interception of the night for Mark McMillan. There is a flag down in the offensive backfield. They're going to call James Hill for holding as he was trying to protect his quarterback. It'll be interesting to see if Stallings uh, accepts this penalty because it happened deep in the backfield, similar to a situation earlier in the game. Hold on the offense, 10 yards from the spot of the foul, still third down. And again, this is 20 yards deep in the backfield where the penalty is here on Antonio London by James Hill. Now you add that 10 yards to the 10 yards of the penalty, you get another 20-yard penalty. So instead of third and five, you go third and 25. Back at the 35 of Colorado. There are not a whole lot of plays in anybody's playbook for this situation. Pass deflected. Antonio London got a hand on it. Well, London shows his versatility, rushing the passer on one play and then dropping back in coverage on the very next one, making plays at both ends. Eight seconds remaining in the third quarter. Alabama leading 23 to 19. High kick by Berger forces the fair catch. And that closes out the third quarter. Three touchdowns in the period. The score, Alabama 23, Colorado 19. Well, it's past midnight in the east as we start the fourth quarter. The second blockbuster bowl. And Alabama, Colorado, they played so many close games on the season, headed for another one. In fact, when you add it up, Alabama's final five games were victories by seven points or less. Meanwhile, Colorado's last four games all came down to the final minute. A tie with Nebraska, a victory at Oklahoma State on a big field goal, a last-minute touchdown against Kansas, and then holding on against Iowa State by a field goal, 17 to 14. So close games, been the story of the season for both teams. We'll see which one perseveres tonight. Jim Nance, and Dan Fouts, Jim Gray, and Andrea Joyce. Joe Robbie Stadium. Inside they go with Turner. Out to the 45, a 16-yard dash for the fullback. Talking to Kevin Turner the other day, he said that his hero is Tom Rathman. In fact, uh, his teammates kid him about uh, being like Tom Rathman because he's such a fine receiver out of the backfield, but this is what he does so well is just power right up the middle. I believe Turner's going to have a good career because he has versatility, 
Uh, and a lot of the pro coaches like that ability to catch the ball as a running back. And Saran Stacy showing tremendous quickness getting into Colorado territory and getting his 100 yards. 21 carries, 101 yards for Saran Stacy. That's the fourth game of the year where he had 100 yards. Well, Stalling was getting wonderful balance this evening. He came into the game wanting to throw for at least 150 yards. So far, Barker has 135. Stacy met right away on this play for no gain. Ron Wolfrick. Jay Lewenberg. Joy to visit with him this week. Danny has a good outlook on them. Not only football, but life. He's already graduated. Graduated in May with a major in English. Like to give pro football a try, and I've got to think he has a future there. But he says, hey, I'm, you know, I'm not going to be that heartbroken when that career ends. Well, he will play, play pro ball. I guarantee you that. Third and one. Turner easily getting the first. Chris Hudson got a hold of him at the 41. A lot of people criticized Stallings' record at 10 and 1, saying they played a weak schedule. But uh, four of the teams that they played are playing in bowl games, unless they beat Auburn 13-6. So uh, the reasons why Stallings said is it because they've stopped the run so far tonight. They've only allowed four yards rushing to Colorado. First down, Stacy. He's going to throw it. No interference intended for Prince Wembley. Dion figures on the coverage. Stacy threw four passes this season. Two of them went for touchdowns. And this is really a questionable call by the officials. It appeared that figures there he pushes off on Wembley right there, and now he just screens him off. Actually, that's a fine play by figures, aside from the first push that he got away with. Good job of screening the receiver from the ball. Second and 10, 13 minutes remaining in the game. Palmer at quarterback. Beaker in on him. Here come the rest of the buffs, but Palmer breaks out of the jam. It gets to the 29. They're about to sack him. Instead, Palmer scampers for 12 yards. This is not how you draw it up, Jim. Believe me, you, you don't <laughs> let four guys come in on your quarterback and expect him to get away from him, unless maybe you're David Palmer. Fantastic play of not only avoiding the sack, but getting down the field and almost getting all the way to the end zone. Barker returns to quarterback. And Stacy to the 25. Give him four on that one. You know, Stacy was talking to us about uh, the great, well, you see his total offense mark tonight. He caught a pass for a touchdown, but how he likes to watch the highlight films of the former great running backs, the Hall of Famers like Gale Sayers, Walter Payton. Earl Campbell, he, he just loves to watch them because uh, he feels that someday he can do the same thing and that someday he'll be called upon. So uh, tonight he's really carrying the load like all great running backs have to do. This time to the 22. He said, "Watching uh, the NFL films uh, when they when they bring back the football legends, it's, just, it's not so much the highlights to pick up on the moves. It's it's more what people say about the players that he's interested in. And he says you always find out that the other players, the colleagues of those Hall of Famers, will tell you how these guys gave everything they had." Sacrifice and hard work being the common threat. Exactly. Palmer back at quarterback. And to the 20-yard line. Not enough for the first, I don't believe. It's going to be fourth and less than a yard. Stallings will go for the field goal here, hoping to up the lead to seven points. And now he sees how close it is. He calls his kicker off the field. They're going to go for it. Remember, they have only one timeout to go. 15 seconds on the down clock, and they haven't even huddled. 
after they take Wethington off the field. They're going to go for it, fourth and inches. They're going to have to call a timeout. Yep, and that's their last. Yep, and just in time indeed. Well, the official signal timeout Colorado. I've got to think that was a missed signal. We'll be right back. Well, to clarify, both Colorado and Alabama were signaling for timeouts, and they charged it to Colorado, so Alabama is left with one. And in a close game such as this one, both teams now have one timeout remaining. But that is a huge break, because there's no way Alabama could have got to the line of scrimmage and got a playoff. Fourth and less than a yard. I like the fact that they're going for it. They have been very successful running the ball here in the second half. Chad Brown might be one guy to watch. He's been the top tackler so far. Turner, first down, Alabama. Well, you compared him to Tom Rathman. Talked about how the team has compared him to Rathman. Two years ago, Turner caught 48 passes out of the backfield. That's a receiving record for running backs in Alabama. Well, here's the play right here. He's going to run right by Steed and pick up the first down. Steed misses a tackle in the backfield. From the 18, Stacy out of the backfield in motion. It's Turner again. This time dropped after a one-yard gain. You remember asking... Turner, how did you guys go 10-1 and one this year? How did this team do it with all the young players? You're one of the few seniors. He said, we went 10-1 and one because we played with a lot of guts. And the senior leadership of your two running backs, uh, and especially when they're as talented as Stacy and Turner, uh, that's really a key because this is a young offensive line. So far, Turner's having as, as good a night as his partner is with the uh, 40 yards on just seven rushes. And a lot of them, again, have been right up the middle against the heart of that Colorado defense. About six yards of a carry, which is right on a season average. Second down and nine. Parker out to the right side, Stacy. And it's Thomas with the tackle, but not until Stacy picks up the Alabama first. Ten yards to Saran Stacy. Well, we talked about this game being a showcase for Darian Hagen. Well, Gene Stallings is showcasing Stacy's ability, not only as a runner, but also as a pass receiver. That time he's motioned him out of the backfield. One-on-one -on -one coverage against Greg Thomas' strong safety, and that was no match as Stacy picks up the first down. David Palmer in a slot to the right, now coming to the near side on first and goal. AC on the toss. He switches directions and takes it to the right side for about a yard. Figures came up to make a good tackle this time. Take a look at the blitz of these linebackers as Stacy hits to this side, and then as you mentioned, Jim, he'll cut it all the way back to the weak side. But Colorado has to make something happen by blitzing. They have to force a turnover here as they trail by four points. Curtis Brown and David Palmer to the right. Second down and goal from the six. Kevin Turner will force a third and goal situation. Chad Brown with the first hit. This drive has taken over six minutes now, Dan. We have 8.40 remaining in the game. 23 to 19, Alabama. And we've seen three drives now in the second half for Alabama. One that was dominated by Stacy, one that was dominated by the quarterback Barker, and now this one, Kevin Turner has been the main figure. Third and goal. Palmer to the bottom of your screen. They're looking for him. Looking for David. Palmer in the corner. Oh, what a catch. Touchdown, Alabama. won't 
see a better catch for a touchdown this side of Ann Arbor. <laughs> Palmer looking a lot like Desmond Howard with the layout. The beautiful catch beating Ronnie Bradford for the score. Wethington with the extra point. Alabama by 11. This kid is sensational. College football has a star for the next three years. This is as good as it gets right here. The concentration, there's the right foot touchdown. He keeps catching like that. He might have a Heisman Trophy. Freshman David Palmer, second touchdown of the night. Alabama and all its great football traditions. More 10-win seasons than any school in college football history. Their 21st 10-win season this year, ranked number eight in the country. And now extending the lead to 11, 30 to 19 with 8-10 to go. And Colorado, CU has stood for, not Colorado University, but Comeback U. CU tonight. Might be see you later. See you later. <laughs> 20 points for Alabama here in the second half. Parker has been largely responsible throwing the ball for Alabama. 11 of 15. And Stalling says he needs to get more production out of his passing game. We've got to get between 150 yards passing and 200 yards passing. He's right at 150 right now. Three touchdowns for Barker. We have not seen... Danny Woodson tonight. Stalling said we've got a quarterback playing his fourth game going against a quarterback who led a team to the national championship. But Barker's been terrific so far. Here's Westbrook on the return. And count him down at the 34. Take us through that touchdown again, Dan. It's just a fade pattern. Here is uh, Palmer and Bradford. But all the way to the outside here, look at all the room that Palmer has to work one-on-one. -on -one. And then it's a perfect throw and beautiful athletic ability for the score. That catch is just as good as you'll ever see at any level. I think your comparison to Desmond Howard was quite nice because Howard made a lot of catches like that this year as well. Here's Hill in the open at midfield. And don't count out this punch. Colorado to the 36 of Alabama. Well, they are down by 12 points, Jim, with seven minutes and 50 seconds to go. But they only have one timeout to use. Thirty-six yard line. Cartney unveiling the offense of the future at Colorado. And trying to get it around to Rico Smith. Oh, what a losing play this will be. Smith back at the 30. The ball is free again. They rule him down at the 30. That is a 34 yard loss. Give or take a few inches. <laughs> oh, boy, oh. when it's going bad, it goes really bad. Talk about a disastrous play. Just when Colorado got one of their better pass plays of the day to Hill down the middle. Watch on the reverse. First thing that happens is Smith just drops the ball. Now he's surrounded. Now watch, he's going to try and throw the ball with his left hand. And he's lucky that the official called him down or that would have been intercepted or grounding anything they could have called a lot of things on that one way downfield and almost intercepted by McMillan again <laughs> Charles Johnson was the receiver in the area I tell you Mark McMillan's a spunky little player isn't he five feet eight 147 pounds but he mans that corner position quite well for Alabama this is not what McCartney had in mind for his new offense, but losing Lamont Warren to that separated shoulder that didn't help any, but McMillan said we talk about him a lot tonight, but we didn't know we'd be <laughs> talking about him dropping two interceptions. Third and 43, I remember Miami 
converting on one of these against Notre Dame two years ago. But not this time for Colorado. And there's McMillan again. Showboating a bit in front of the Colorado bench. And now he comes over to where his showboating will be more appreciated. <laughs> That's right. That's what defensive backs and cornerbacks have to be. They have to have that type of personality where they don't care about anything but intercepting passes and making tackles. Now well, let's see if David Palmer wants to add to the highlight film. Chad Brown adds to his tackle total, which will be quite large when this one's over. I think we're looking at our blockbuster player of the game right there, number two. Yeah, I got that same feeling. Do we get a, Just a hunch? That, huh? Just a hunch. Well, they haven't come by to take it yet. <laughs> well, it was in 1926 when a Goodyear blimp first arrived in South Florida. And there's been one here since. Our thanks to the folks with the spirit of Akron and Goodyear tires for the many overhead views for our telecast tonight. They just delivered our MVP Boy, ballot, Jim. You, right on cue. And they're going deep into the roster now. Tarrant Lynch, third-team fullback. It's across the 30 to the 32. I hope you don't mind, but I just filled in David Palmer's uh, name it for our combined vote here in the CBS. Oh, we booth. don't get two. We get one. Just one. We just get one. So one vote? Okay. Yeah. So you went ahead and just well, you awarded busy. yourself the, you the right to do that, huh? You were busy talking. <laughs> <laughs> Wish you picked up a check that fast. Second down and eight. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Chris Anderson will lose yardage. Greg Beekert on the tackle. But Palmer got it started earlier in the evening. Remember that? About four or five hours ago with mm. that beautiful 52-yard punt return. <laughs> then he caps it off with a beautiful catch in the end zone. Are you saying this game's running a little long? Well, I got a, a curfew that I've already passed, and I'm looking at an early flight in the morning <laughs> that is in danger now. <laughs> Alabama third and 14. Five minutes remaining. Alabama leading by 11. Craig Harris. And it's good to see the senior getting some playing time. Senior from Panama City, Florida. Craig Harris. Alabama will punt. Rico Smith is the return man. Hey, that's an Alabama bowl record. Three touchdown passes by Barker. Rico Smith from the 35. A lot of red jerseys down there. And going out of bounds, Rico Smith at the 45. Colorado, 425 to work with and one timeout. CBS Sports coverage of the Blockbuster Bowl is sponsored by Blockbuster Video. More movies than anyone in the world. Lincoln Mercury and the complete line of 1992 Mercury automobiles. Siemens for leading edge technologies in electronic and electrical engineering depend on Siemens. And by Raycom, proud to be creators of the Blockbuster Bowl. Alabama tough in the second half. And let's check Colorado see if they have one more miraculous victory to pull off under the Darien Hagen era doesn't look like it Antonio London <laughs> celebrating doing the worm down there wasn't it <laughs> that's the sixth sack of Hagen and now no huddle for the Buffaloes no huddle and Virtually no offense tonight. Yeah, no sense to go on a huddle. High stepping away is Hagen. And he zips that one to Henry for the first and down to the 38 of Alabama. 20 yards on that play. 
I've seen him pull it off too many times, Dan, to count him out. And his teammates uh, have too, obviously, Jim, and they think that uh, his leadership abilities and that winning attitude that anything's possible with Darian Hagan at quarterback. Wide open. Oh, what a catch this time. Charles Johnson, he dropped a bomb earlier in this game, and this one a much tougher opportunity. He takes it. 13-yard line. 25 yards on that pass play. Some catch, wasn't it, Dan? Yeah, and the clock stopped because of the first down. It starts to roll now, so with this pass... This pass goes a for a touchdown. Colorado's back within one score. Charles Johnson, and now Colorado will have to go for two. Charles Johnson. He beat McMillan in the fade pattern. We've seen three fade patterns this evening go for touchdowns. That was a super catch by Charles E. Johnson for the score. Two tough catches in a row for Johnson. Coverage is pretty good by McMillan. But he reaches over the top of that five foot eight defensive back for the score. Here's the two-point opportunity to get within a field goal. Play action from Hagen to the back of the end zone. Batted away. Lemansky Hall. That was intended for Darnell Brooks. 30 to 25 is our score with 3.30 to go in the game. Charles Johnson, his second touchdown catch of his career at Colorado the first catch from a first time he caught a touchdown pass from a quarterback the other one was a touchdown pass from Lamont Warren on an option play with one timeout to go do you kick it away or you kick the onside kick now I think you got to go for the onside kick right now you can't afford to uh, give the ball to Alabama and let them run the clock out you can only stop it one time with your timeouts so I would expect the onside kick. I'm sure Stallings is as well. Let's get a report now from our man, Jim Gray. Jim? All right. Thank you, Jim. You know, Darian Hagan is truly a remarkable individual. He, we all know of his accomplishments on the playing field, but what you don't know is he's from Watts, a section in Los Angeles, and he's going to graduate on time with his class. And we had a chance to talk to him a couple of days ago, and he said of all the things that he's done, he's the most proud that he's going to go out after four years with his degree. Jim? It's a great story. He will graduate. He'll have to take 21 hours in the spring semester, but he'll do it. He'll have the, the cloth, the canvas, come May. And that'll be a heck of an accomplishment, taking 21 hours in one term. And the buffs booted away. It'll go through the end zone, and Bama will have it at its 20-yard line. Now the big question for McCartney is can his defense do something they haven't been able to do since two or three hours ago in the first <laughs> half of this ball game, and that stopped the tide. You look at this uh, graphic, and this evening, all three touchdown drives by the Buffaloes have been under one minute. So they've even improved on that statistic. David Palmer to the right side. Pitch it deep to Palmer. And they go out of bounds. That's not what you want if you're an Alabama fan, but six yards on the carry by Palmer. It used up six seconds on the clock. And I guarantee that Mal Moore is telling him to stay in bounds and tell everybody else in that huddle that time is the important thing now, not yards. We've got to take as much time off that clock as we possibly can. Second down and four. Houston and Lassick are almost, in the game. You can almost see Stallings ask, why did he go out of bounds? Inside, Lassick, first down carry for the Crimson Tide. 
I mean, Stallings is showing a lot of uh, confidence in his backup running backs there. He's got Lassick in the game here and Houston. These will be the, uh, the backfield for next year along with Barker, so they're getting a lot of valuable experience in crunch time. Alabama might be one more first down away from closing this one out. Colorado's defense must rise. Must come through here to have a chance for another last-minute victory. Looking for a big loss on this play. Lassick is swarmed under at the 27. Chad Brown, again, another tackle for that Colorado outside linebacker, a loss of six. They were all coming on that one. You just wonder when McCartney is going to use that last timeout. And remember the timeout that was charged to Colorado when Bama was going for it earlier in this quarter on fourth and one. Everyone thought Alabama had used its last timeout. Wouldn't they love to have that one now? Second and 16. Classic for a short game. Now they'll use that last timeout. So that'll bring up the third and long. Third and 14 it will be for Gene Stallings. And now the question for Stallings is, do you risk a forward pass here? What do you think? You know, I've got a hot hand uh, as, I'm, as a quarterback. you got Barker out there as seven out of eight here in the second half. And even that one incompletion wasn't an <laughs> incompletion. It was intercepted, but it still didn't hit the ground. So you got to feel that uh, you got to give Barker a shot at completing a pass. Give him something safe, something he has a lot of confidence in. But uh, a first down here, and this one's over. If they don't pick up the first down, then Mr. Hagan gets one more shot. Well, I hope our next two bowl games are as close as this one. Tuesday, the Hancock Bowl, UCLA and Illinois, 2.30 Eastern time. Fourth straight bowl appearance for the Illini. And fullback Kevin Williams of UCLA led the Pac-10 in rushing. Then on New Year's Day, Florida State against Texas A&M. Florida State losing its last two regular season games. Will they bounce back? And how about Texas A&M? They have a lot to prove. They've got the future of the Southwest Conference on their shoulders. They need a big win. That's Florida State and A&M, New Year's Day, CBS. Colorado defense huddled on the sideline with Bill McCartney. We've talked about it, how this is the end of an era. This is the end of the Darian Hagan era at Colorado. Oh, how he'd love to have one more chance. <laughs> they call him Mr. Magic, his teammates do. And you just know that he's going to get one more chance. It's, he's got to. It's already written. Third and 14. We're going to get a, an illegal procedure penalty against Alabama. They had two men moving at one time. Turner took the handoff. Now, Colorado can refuse this, bringing up fourth down. Clock stops, so it's a double penalty against penalty Alabama. Motion. Two men in motion, one stop, the second one did not. The penalty is declined, fourth down. Crucial mistake by Alabama. Okay. Looking to run the clock down. Two men in motion at the same time. And CU is poised for another comeback. And Darian Hagan has not been returning punts in the second half. He's in there now as the returner. He'll have a chance on this short one by Williamson. Oh, he lets it bounce out of bounds at the 31. He couldn't get there in time. 38-yard punt. Hagen will have to take the Buffalo 69 yards. And he needs a touchdown, trailing now by five. Bill McCartney talked to us about Darian Hagen and how much he'll miss him. Well, he means so much to the ball club. Uh, so many of the intangible things. Tremendous leader and competitor, and this is a wonderful way to end his uh, Colorado career. Three receivers to the left. Hagan flushed out of the pocket. He'll work the sideline wisely, and they mark it at the 40. And you know he's having fun. Look at the bounce in his step as he goes back to the huddle. 
This is a contagious feeling that he is now transmitting to his teammates. They all believe that Hagen can get it done. And this man does too. Where they mark the football, it's just a we're going to mark. They're going to bring the chains out to to check. I believe he's a little short of the first. Up on a foot. Well, this is good that it is short, Jim, because it's second down. They're obviously going to make the first down, but the clock will stop when they do make the first down. A, a good rule in college football so they can reset the chains but it gives the offense very valuable seconds at the close of a game but wouldn't they love to have that one time out left though mm -hmm. they really saved Alabama in that situation fourth down and Bama may not have beaten the down clock they started the call for the timeout, but they saw Colorado first. Can't worry about it now. No timeouts. Second and inches. That'll pick up the first. And they'll go into Alabama territory at the 43. Hagan, 18 yards on that dash. And you see the clock stops as they move the chains. Hagan calling audibles at the line of scrimmage. So valuable to have a senior leader such as Hagan in this situation. One thirty remaining. Hagan in the pocket. Now from behind, Lemansky Hall drops him at the 48. And the clock will run. And Hagan is just flat tired right now. Had nothing left in the gas tank to escape that rush. Never saw Hall come from behind. Seventh sack of Hagan. This ball will be snapped with a minute to go. Almost intercepted by London. Third and 15 coming up. Well, hold on a minute. There is a flag on the far side. Since 1988, Colorado has come from behind with 11 wins in the last minute. And some of those have been memorable. Six men on the line, on the offense, penalty is declined, third down. And they have won in the most unusual of circumstances, including a fifth down play against Missouri a year ago. Hagan was not the quarterback, it was Charles Johnson at the end of that one. Third and 15. He releases it just in time, and the catch made by Brown, breaking off one tackle and getting near the first. He's about a yard shy. John Sullins decked Darian Hagan after he released it. 14 yards, it'll be fourth and one. That was an outstanding play by Brown, using that big body of his at 245 pounds. Kept the defender away, reached out, made the grab, and got down close to the first down. Will the dream comeback continue, or will it end here on fourth and one? Hagan into the middle. This game is over. Alabama stuffs him on fourth and one. John Copeland and Lemansky Hall. And Eric Curry came in as well, Jim. This is the quarterback's dream now. He gets the call from the sidelines just fall on it this baby's over big fourth down stop by Alabama take a look at it there is Curry coming off the ball extremely fast cut to the inside and just stuffs the ball carrier for the loss James Hill never had a chance James Hill the fullback trying to plunge for one yard to keep the drive alive Fantastic anticipation of the snap count 
by Eric Curry. Parker falls on it. Alabama will end the season 11 and 1. Terry and Hagen and the Buffs gave us a thrill at the end. Our players of the game, Saran Stacy. Stacy beating out David Palmer. I guess that my vote was overruled, huh, pal? And Chad Brown shows you how much weight you carry. <laughs> Chad Brown was the man with the honors for Colorado. Gene Stallings, what a coaching job this year, 11-1. finest option operators in the history of college football sees his college career come to a close in another thriller. Let's go down to Jim Gray. Gene, congratulations on a great year. You come in now, you're 11 and 1. Nobody expected this. Your feelings, is this your most satisfying yeah. season? Well, it was a great season. I'm proud of the players and staff. It's just fun to be at Alabama. What about the new offense that Colorado tried to throw at you? Did you were you expecting that well, all the time? We have we are able to adjust all kinds of defenses. So it was a great job. Good game. Good game plan. Well, Gary, game. and you had a great career. Your thoughts here as the career ends. Hey, it came to a it came to a uh, Exciting end. I wouldn't say disappointing. Uh, we did we, we did what we had to do. Uh, we made a lot of mistakes early and it cost us. But uh, you know we got a heck of a ball team. They'll be back. You were a great college player. We've all enjoyed it. Let's go back upstairs to Jim. Yes, thanks for the memories. Congratulations, Alabama. So for Dan Fouts, Andrea Joyce, and Jim Gray, Jim Nance saying so long from the Blockbuster Bowl, where the final score is Alabama 30, Colorado 25. Later today on CBS Sports, the Dallas Cowboys take on the Chicago Bears in an NFC wildcard game. It all starts with the NFL today at 12 noon Eastern, the last word before kickoff. Stay with us. More bowl action this week. You've been watching the Blockbuster Bowl on CBS Sports. Happy holidays, everybody.